Hello everybody and welcome back to the KCM. We're here for season two now. It's been a little break. We had a week off, but we are back here ready to go. Raring with Queen and Light for our first game. And a brand new sponsor here as well. HMall has picked up the KCM guys. And uh, I think it's going to bring some longevity here to the KCM. Every time we get a sponsor, it just makes me so happy uh, that people are still interested in StarCraft, that they're still willing to support StarCraft. And we've even got the new lineup bar here at the bottom. Things are things are looking up, man. Wow, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this already. And uh, yeah, getting some life breathed into us with this sponsor sounds uh, pretty good. And I'm really digging this little bar at the bottom, seeing the names. Uh, and also, I like it being like a bar, like taking more uh, horizontal space rather than the vertical space. I think that much suits the, uh, the heads up display of the game as well. That doesn't block quite as much and with that new sponsor guys we're gonna get a, a, an extra prize here um it was discussed by kcm before the game uh, that they will get some korean beef on top of the 750,000 won uh, first place prize each week so there's maybe going to be a mix up you know different prizes each week i'm not sure but this week for sure it's going to be that korean beef I mean, I would say these players definitely need their protein, and uh, Light especially will be needing to be on full form today. He's going for an 8 racks against uh, Queen, and uh, if he botches this, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare situation. He's kind of banking on Queen not doing a ninth scout as well, because some Zergs would send their ninth drone to scout here, which would really shut down an 8 racks or a BBS play, and Queen's doing full-on greed, and it's not going for that, so it's a... No, it's, it's very convenient for Light like, going forward that Queen didn't do any kind of crazy fast scout timing because that could have really blundered Light like, early game here. Now, usually we wouldn't say that a 12 hatch is greedy play from a Zerg player, but in the current meta, it kind of is because there's so Especially many the yeah, there's, just, there's so many people going for this 8 racks right now. Yeah, and on maps like this, it's it's just it makes you even more want to either go for like a nine pull into expansion or eleven pull or something like an early drone scale to kind of counteract that. So now we might see a little bit of pressure here from Light trying to punish this uh, fast hatch replay from Queen on this map Dark Origin here, and uh, he's not going to know it's a uh, eight Rex until like right when he starts to come down after like say two three Marines have already like been assembled. So he won't know until the very last second because the Overlord's only just now starting to make it its way into the natural expansion. And what's it looks like to be a one 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 follow up from Light, maybe going into two port Wraith here. Although he's not mining additional gas, I don't think so. It's not probably not going to be Wraith. So maybe a Vulture Rumbai build or something. I don't know. Yeah, this is bad, man. Queen didn't even send out the 11th drone, like the drone that comes out after the hatchery gets placed. This is, um, yeah, this is not good. He, he's uh, going to pull a bunch of drones. Let's see how his control is, uh, if he can get a good surround on these Marines. But three are here. They gun down those drones so fast. He's actually going to run by, try to catch Marines as they're coming across. But even with three in the bunker... That's going to pre uh, present a sizable risk here to this hatchery. That hatchery will go down quite quickly. Lings are being popped out. He only has one SCV here. Maybe if he can put together 12 Lings, surround this bunker and kill it off, he could still be in a good position. Here we go. Lings going to come out. He's going to try and target down the SCV, I think, with the uh, the drones here. Popping out on the other side now, the SCV tries to get back to work, but he does get the full surround. He kills all the Marines, and I don't think he lost even a single drone, did he? No, no. I don't think he did. That's with really great hold from Queen so far. He just needs to make sure he doesn't take any damage to this Vulture. He's barely not going to see the Vulture. Look at that. Just as he moves the Overlord to check, the Vulture had already slipped out. So he's not going to see the vision of that. But this Sunken is on the way. Has got some links to block. So he cancels the Scrape Colony, though. Oh, no. He's misread this completely. This is really bad for Queen. He has got link speed, though. So with good micro, he can still catch this Vulture. But it's going to be really tough because Light is not. He likes a pro gamer that has a pretty good micro. So potentially he can still kill all these links, even though they have speed. So he has to be very careful here and he's beautiful surround from queen though gonna be just snagging that vulture clutching it out and immediately putting himself into a phenomenal position where light's not gonna have the kind of critical mass of vultures that he needs to take on these links so instead light's gonna be pretty passive with his vultures and being defensive meanwhile queen's gonna get two hatch worth of hydro production make sure he doesn't die to anything and also give himself the opportunity to counter attack with maybe a two hatchery timing here wow 
I thought that uh, Queen was in a really bad spot there when he cancelled the sunken colony, but... I mean, looking at this, he did produce a lot of lings, right? He's got so many lings here, and there are three vultures out right now. So three vultures just massacre lings. Uh, even if you do, you know, jump on top of them, as long as he's pulling back the ones that are being surrounded, uh, he can just crush through those lings. So... I still think this is a pretty risky situation here for Queen. He doesn't have a lot of drones right now. He's just got all these links out, which are kind of useless. Um, and he's going to start to lose overlords, of course. We've got the first overlord going down. Hydras are going to be popping out here. So at least he has a backup plan to fight those vultures in case, you know, four vultures come over here. Um, he's got something to deal with that, but he's going to have to hold this wraith. And he's going to have to try and drone up here while being as safe as possible. Um, yeah, he, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, he's going to probably make at least a four hydras here, but I was really curious to see if Queen was going to do something hyper-aggressive and just go non-stop um, hydra production here and try and like possibly kill Light, because Light would, would be able to make a bunker on the ramp here, but the tank would take a long time to come out, and uh, even with a bunker on the ramp, it's actually not that easy of a choke to hold about a full wall off for um, Terran here. So you can get up the ramp with Hydras and really punish a Terran in these situations. But it looks like he's making a very minimal amount of Hydras for the time being. So I think we might see a somewhat transition into a normal game here. But Cloak is being a research from Light. So he definitely wants to maintain this air dominance and try and harass Queen for quite some time. Probably will not be taking his expansion for quite a while. Yeah, I'm a little surprised to see Cloak coming in. Um, in this spot, the natural... The order of things, I think, would be the dropship, right? You would go into a drop after this. You send the vultures around the map and try to drop into the the uh, Zerg base. But um, it doesn't seem like that's the route he wants to go. He's being really greedy here, though, with not getting a bunker. And the Hydras are coming across the map. Ah, uh, this, uh, this is looking a little scary here. The Lings just vaporize, though, coming up the ramp. Not going to do anything there. And the Hydras do push up. Picking off a lot of these vultures. The a the SCVs are going to get in on the action, though. And with the added DPS from the Wraiths, looks like everything is going to be pushed back. And with the Cloak coming in as well, now he can start to chase down the Hydras. This is not looking good for Queen now. No, this is looking really bad. He definitely missed his window on that. He he, he did he did manage to overcome light in the sense of he met a game team and made sure he didn't have a bunker up. But it doesn't really matter. He had enough critical mass of vultures and, and what have you to defend that. And with the SCVs being pulled, there's not really any way you can break that without more hydras. So I think Queen tried to middle ground too much. He should have like committed harder to that if he wanted to go for something like that. And because he kind of like hedged his bets a little bit too much, he's kind of paying the price for it now. And this will give light some breathing room to maybe expand. But it's still not. He's not out the woods yet the, the race will have dominance for some time but they'll eventually run out of cloak so queen can delay the natural expansion a little bit here but the cloak will now start to run out and their pressure will be back onto light again because he hasn't got any tanks out yet so that at the very least the expansion is being delayed and that's actually quite a big deal for light here would be really nice to have uh burrow right now burrow would really shut down the uh the cloak wraith play because he can't just chase the hydras indefinitely that can burrow underground and hide from the cloak rates until they run out of that energy uh, but i don't think he's invested into that here he's really f putting out a lot of hydras making sure that he doesn't get run by uh, into the natural here um gonna catch a bunch of these vultures on the right hand side but does he have the forces back at home to defend this no he does not so he throws down a wall a quick impromptu wall here will save his life a uh, nice little maneuver there by Queen to keep himself uh, safe in the natural, but he's going to have to hold these Wraiths once again. Wraiths coming in, getting a few kills as Light gears up to take his natural. Light's going bio, by the way. Like, Light's transitioning from this 111 into bio, and he's kind of doing like a crazy Terran style where he went first into vessels off of like one barracks and like teched up heavy first. But he's, it's, it might work out really well for him because right now Queen is kind of gearing up to, to fight against a potential mech play. But uh, he's not probably thinking about a very strong SK Terran of one base play coming out of light after this opening. He did only see vultures though, so he might still be considering this possibility. But and he has, I think he's just going to make mutilus from here, and that's going to be a bit of a nightmare situation because if he is going bio and he's going vessels with irradiate and your only tech is mutas, then Queen could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, this is one of the scariest follow-ups to the one-one-one. Is uh, the Terran player just sitting there, kind of biding? 
wasting their time. There's not really a good way to scout in and see exactly what's happening. And then a huge amount of bio comes out and you don't have Lurker ready. Looks like an evolution chamber going to get thrown down here. Um, he did manage to poke up a little bit and I think he saw that there are some bio units coming out. He's even going to jump on top of the Marines as they're coming down the ramp. Actually picking off quite a few of them. Focusing those Marines down is actually insanely good, right? As these Marines come across yeah. the map, they're going to get really really powerful and hard to stop with hydra and he's doing a very good job of targeting them down right now wow he's getting rid of almost all the marines he's wow. gonna be able to kill them all wow this is really great play from queen this is like his only window to punish the bio was him coming down the ramp like that and this is the the when the, the bio is at its weakest so he's hit a great timing here now finally stim and range will be finishing up and making it much harder for these hydras to get these kinds of trades anymore but he got value out of them uh, meanwhile and that's what that matters and looks like he's actually not going to be going for those mutas he's identified that that that's the wrong play here and instead he's going to be just getting his um, lurker tech out and trying to dump this gas into lurkers instead so he's going to use the hydras proactively slow down the terror make him a little more hesitant to move out with this smaller bio ball now buy him the valuable time that he needs to maybe get these lurkers going because otherwise he might just die to like the pure hydra will not work forever mm, i think you need to get right into hive here too though right like hive is super important because we will have eventually tanks on the field i believe once we've get, got the natural up i think the natural the 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 normal progression here for light would be to go into some tank push but uh, right now he's just going to be coming across with this uh, first tech the vessel and marine medic see what he can do with that if he gets denied here he can transition into the next stage of this game but this is a quick skill check see if uh you know, there are indeed lurkers out and ready to fight this bio. If there was just pure Hydra here, he could actually go for a win and just kill. And wow, losing a vessel already. Pretty rough stuff here for Light. He was actually hoping to get more uh, value out of those vessels. Just trying to get a few more radiates on these lurkers and maybe open up an opportunity to push through. Well, because of how delayed the, the Terran expansion has been, it actually doesn't matter that his defilers will be super late. He can he can he can kind of fight with battle zerg because there's only one starport worth of production. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be the kind of like overwhelming numbers of like irradiates coming out from the Terran player, and he can kind of pick and choose his engagements wisely and try and slow down the Terran's advances and then overwhelm with a critical mass. And now we see him also being a little more proactive out on the map with his speedlings and stuff, keeping the Terran worried about counterattacks and what have you. The Terran is only producing off a maximum of four barracks and one star put on one base he's only just now got his uh, natural expansion up and going so it will be a long time before he fully kicks into his next gear or production and now we can see queen able to come in here and get some value out of these cheap uh, zerglings also going to be going to the main base maybe get a scout off on exactly what the tech is and exactly what the production is here for light so sees exactly that there's five barracks worth of production there's only one star port and now that terran army came back to defend us a little bit it gives a lot more breathing room for queen to push up to these ramps yeah critically he saw no no uh, upgrade there on the factory rolling. He saw no tanks popping out. So he knows it's not going to be uh, tanks coming out for quite a long time, if at all. It's probably just going to be straight up SK Terran. And that means that he can push way up here. And even though his defiler is very, very late, it really isn't going to matter, like you said. Uh, not having the tanks there means he's not going to be able to push across these bridges with this many lurkers over here. And it's going to give Queen ample time to get that. Uh, defiler tech out and operational and i think we're just going to go into a hydro defiler game after this yeah pretty much and light is going to make some tanks and try and get those online but it's going to be too little too late the defiler mounts already online one thing that could work for light here though is this run around play if, if queen doesn't spot this and can't kill him then he's in trouble but queen might not identify that there's no army here but okay i think, I think now queen realizes something is amiss and now he starts to see these units over here maybe and it's going to be pulling all of his army back to see if he can try and sandwich this army just before it gets across the bridges but it looks like he's slightly missing his window okay now he's getting a pretty good window here just before the terran army has the time to transit across these bridges and now he's kind of isolated some of the units and able to fight some of it on its own and now he's traded off enough of the bio forces that probably light doesn't want to even think about coming in for another attack anytime soon but will instead be looking for this drop ship on the right hand side of the map yeah the drop is a great idea you're so active with this uh, battle zerg style you know running around trying to catch the the bio this is all you're focusing on 
one, uh, the drop can just come in and pretty much ruin your day. If it's dropped way back here in the main, it's going to add a lot of chaos to the situation, and you might not be able to handle your uh, massive, you know, battle zerg army properly uh, while all this is going on. He's going to probably drop a couple of marines here in the natural, and then or in the third, and then go directly for the main. Um, dropping everything out here in a long line. It's just pure marine so far. I haven't seen even a single firebat or medic in this drop. So uh, just pure damage dealers here. And it's actually going to deal quite a bit uh, to the economy yeah. here of Queen. A lot of drones going down during this. And like I said, look at this. You're going to open up an opportunity here to maybe kill off some of these lurkers. Queen not paying attention with all this chaos that's going on in his main. And third base right now, this is a perfect opportunity for Light to sneak in and get a bunch of kills. Yeah, he's even going to pick up a few drone kills with these vultures being super active. Denying Queen mining this third gas is huge right now. Queen's only getting 600 gas a minute from these two guys that's in his main and natural. So shutting him out of that extra 300 gas, to even just temporarily, is a, a nightmare situation for Queen. He can't produce the kind of crazy amounts of scourge, lurkers, and defilers that he needs to be in a great position at the moment. Instead, he's going to be in a more passive defensive posture, which is basically where he didn't want to have to be. He didn't, he didn't, want, to, he didn't want to be in a situation where he's like fighting for his survival in this game. He wanted to be able to put pressure onto light and threaten uh, potential game ending moves and instead he's back into a more passive way of playing mm -hmm. and there's the first defiler popping out it will be irradiated um only one scourge can connect on this uh, vessel so it will survive for now uh, all the links end up dying that's uh, a little bit bad for queen you really need those links for food to keep these uh, defiler uh, spells going you don't want to be throwing away a, you know big groups of lings for free right now because you know we're not at that like four base with tons and tons of drones you know 45 50 drones uh, point just yet we really do need every bit of minerals and gas that we've got uh, in order to take on this big sk terran that's uh, threatening to kill you at any moment um so want to see it as efficient trades as possible here from queen until he gets that plague out and then he can start plaguing the army right now is not the time to be throwing away any units we've got to be very careful for queen yeah light also needs to take his third base asap because his main base is going to be mined out soon because he was oversaturated for so long playing one base so now he needs to get his third base online while keeping the pressure on Queen, but he's so distracted right here. I think now he's going to be sending an SCV to make a third command center. Okay, there's the command center being thrown down by like, yeah, he needs this badly. Oh, the Queen though, blowing up to the mine, not going to be able to get that huge plague of all, all that Terran army that was just in a big square there. Really unfortunate for Queen, that plague could have like spelt disaster for Light. Yeah, really good uh, idea from Light to just put the mines right at the bridges there. You know that he's going to try and walk across and just get a free plague off on you and uh, the mines are shutting that down so perfectly there. Um, so cost efficiently as well, right? A one mine for one defiler is about as cost efficient as you could possibly get. And now I'm going to come up here, try to grab a fourth base. Queen realizing that, you know, Light has some... He's got some things on his plate. He does have to take that third of his own. He can't put on that much pressure right now. He's got to be a little bit more defensive while he's getting all this uh, stuff online. So uh, trying to take this base over here on the right-hand side. It's probably not going to stay up uh, with this much bio, this many fire bats, and all of these irradiates coming down. I think he can break through this great spread by light, and he will be able to deny the fourth base. But maybe this op opens up an opportunity for Queen to hit somewhere else. Maybe he can, uh, you know, get some good plagues going here um break out into the center of the map or something no it looks like he's actually going to come around this right hand side he does get a great plague though and that is kind of the the thing that he needs right now some really great plagues to start getting very efficient against this army yeah, he hasn't even got his armor yet, so the, the Lurkers are still killing the Marines in two hits with their subterranean spines, so Light needs to... I hope he's got a second eBay. Maybe he hasn't, though. Maybe he's just been doing all of his upgrades off just a single eBay and trying to min-max to the absolute extreme, and he's only getting pure weapon upgrades, which is very interesting if that is the case. Might even get a bit more value out of his Lurkers this way, but only just now starting to mine from his third base, so if there was a small window there where there wasn't as much gas in the tank of Light and he wasn't churning out the same kind of critical amount of units that he could be now he's back to doing that so yeah and he is also starting to be uh, able to deal out a lot of irradiates onto these uh, defilers and really harass queen 
Um, I, so far, though, I, I don't feel like Queen's at any risk of dying. I feel like he's going to get this fourth gas online, and that as long as um, Light is proactive with these vessels, though, I actually think think that Light's going to win this game because he, he's got like eight vessels right now. As he keeps irradiating all of these defilers and lurkers like this, I think he's going to bleed Queen dry slowly but surely. Yeah. Queen, I mean, a bit unfortunately, didn't have any energy on that Defiler to put down any spells there. You gotta uh, make sure to consume before sending the Defilers out to where they need to be. Um, but the the constant ar harassment with the Irradiates at the, uh, at the Natural there has been a real thorn in Queen's side. And he is going to break through here with Fire Bats again, showing how powerful Fire Bats are. Another Defiler goes down to a mine. And this is just horrible for Queen. He's been losing all of his defilers over and over and over again, not just to uh, irradiates as his tradition, but also to these mines, which is really unorthodox play from Light, but it's uh, working out incredibly well. Is he going to get a great plague here? He does get a pretty decent plague, but the vessel's still un uh, plagued here. That's really the important thing. We need to get a plague on those vessels so that we can finally uh, get that big trade, get rid of all of the irradiates, and actually have a decent uh, chance in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm really like not liking Queen's chances here. He's now finally gone sub-70 supply. He's been ping-ponging between 70 and 80 supply for so many minutes now, and that's basically a survival mode for Zerg. And a lot of Terran players will complain and say it's impossible to kill Zerg even with 70 supply, but the reality is that Zerg's not able to be too proactive with this kind of supply. He's trying desperately to come out onto the map, see if he can get plagues and snipes on these vessels, but he's not really getting the kind of trades that he needs right now. And look at this beautiful like force from like He's been able to build a whole fleet of vessels slowly but surely, and now Queen just can't even trade with anymore. GG finally called, picking up a quick win for Terran here. I'm not liking uh, Zerg's odds in this matchup, but I'm still not liking Terran's either with the prowess lineup to come. Yeah, you know it's bad when the vessels start irradiating all the Hydras. That's when you know the game is over. Um, it's not the greatest trade, one irradiate for a Hydra, and you can even make it into a Lurker Egg, so, uh, and save that uh, unit, so, uh, when you see the Hydra start to get irradiated, it is when the Terran is pushing through for the victory. The use of Fire Bats in that game was really on point for Light, and that's something that's been becoming more and more popular uh, in this matchup, and just giving Terran another tool to break Zergs, um, it, it's starting to feel more and more imbalanced, honestly, from my perspective as a Zerg player. It's like, holy, the Terran already has so many different ways to break you. Now we've got the D-Matrix Firebats and, uh, you know, just mass Firebats coming out that can break through these Defilers and, and Lurkers and stuff. That's becoming really, really hard to hold on. And yeah, Queen just was not able to hold on there. Let's jump into game number two. And we're going to keep it going here with the best versus the light coming out next. Best is just crazy, crazy on fire right now. He is uh, the next level. He's the evolved form of his ape <laughs> self. This King Kong, man. Yeah, he is um, continuing to just grow and improve every time we get a look at him in KCM. He's getting better and better and... Uh, he didn't do it super well uh, in the KCM finals, if I remember correctly. I think he got kind of whooped. I right? think he had like one. I think he had one okay ish. I think was it was it, did he have one good game and then he got whooped or was it he got whooped right away? I can't remember. I can't remember. Like that. He, he, he didn't he didn't perform as to his usual standard. That's for sure. That's for sure. And um, I mean, we got so used to him just dominating Terran players throughout the entire season. It was really a, kind of a shock to see him right. go out so quickly in that finals. But here he is. He's back again. Uh, we'll see what kind of games he's... Is, is he the, the KCM Finals version of himself? Or is he like KCM Season 1, Week 1 uh, of 2024? Uh, version of himself here i mean it's still going to be a great ape it's just a matter of like how jacked is that great ape you know is it a silverback gorilla or is that king kong himself you know it's like objects in the mirror may appear close or maybe maybe closer than they appear and like you, know, you don't quite know the perspective of that guy until he's like up close and personal he's got his arms wrapped around you 
Well, on this map right here, there's a lot of room to charge, especially coming down from the high ground onto the third base. Uh, it can feel like the Terran is just invincible when they set up their third base there on the low ground, and it's like, well, you just can't get in there, right? Like, it's, it's silly to just uh, attack down that ramp, but... Best is the type of guy who will just go for it. He will not give a crap. He will try to bust you, uh, even on three base, even if you have the great wall of supply depots, right. even if you have everything set up to perfection, like I'm sure that Light will. Uh, Best can still just bust through everything with his mass shuttle style, um, and it, it will not be a false charge. He will just slam right into you despite you being, you know, in a great defensive position. You're not wrong saying he's, uh, pun intended, the best in the business at what he does. And that's looking at Terran positions on paper that just look unbreakable. But somehow he just looks at that same battle simulator and that, that calculation and goes, nah. And just finds a way of just somehow still bowling over the Terran player with a perfect synchronization of rally zealots coming in to like finish the job. I don't know how he does it. It's just brain is just wired differently. It's a different kind of ape strain going on right now. Some kind of micro evolution. You know, it's kind of Planet of the Apes type deal where we're going to be the obsolete uh, sen sentient force soon. He'll, the great apes will be rising up to take our place. Mm, I think I think you might be right there. Well, Best is uh, not putting out his first Dragoon. He's actually got Nexus before Dragoon here. Um, so we should see a Dragoon shortly, but well, it wasn't too eager to scout here. So uh, he's going to send that SCV over towards the top center now. He won't end up getting into the main base, I think, of best here. He will have that uh, Dragoon out on time, but he's managed to get himself a pretty reasonably timed command center uh, with the bunker here at the front, so he's feeling pretty safe. He's got a pretty nice timed uh, CC with a factory behind that. Something's being built in the main base, though. Maybe it's a... Uh, is that a factory on the far left? I think so. No, no, factory factories on the right. So the starport on the left, actually. I think that's what we're seeing. It's, it's either an eBay or a starport, but mm. I don't think it's going to be an eBay this early. So I'm imagining it's a starport. There it is, yeah. starport. Uh, so some sort, some sort of drop play here. Since he's not under pressure, he doesn't need to build a tank. He's just going to pump out a few uh, vultures and, and try to get some damage. Yeah, I mean, Light is well known for his uh, dropship play. He's, in fact, in the Pro Gamer House, back when he used to play in the Pro Gamer House situation, everyone on his team, every single pro on his team had great anti-vulture uh, drop play. And they'd always have Dragoons lined up in their base at like six minutes and have all their eyes dotted, all their T's crossed because of this guy, Light. Whereas all the other Pro Gamer Houses, because they weren't privy to this information, would just get stomped by it over and over again. So yeah, he's he was way well known for his vulture drop play and still is very good at it. Looks like we're gonna take some mind damage here. Ooh. But unfortunate for best. And a vulture almost making its way into the natural as well. Okay, is this gonna target the mine? No, he doesn't target the mine. That's unfortunate. And this vulture may end up slipping by. No, does get picked off. No probe damage, but two dragoons already pretty low on that HP. We don't have an observer out just yet. And he's gonna eat another shot, losing the first dragoon. That is going to hurt him really badly here coming up when the uh, vultures get picked up and dropped into the main. The dragoons are out yeah. here in the front and damaged. That's uh, that's not a good situation. The observatory is not even close to done. Looks like he does spend all of his mines out on the map before dr dropping in. So he can just go straight for probes. But uh, having a few mines mixed in there could actually have spelled disaster for best. There's a critical window here for the Terran player. Now, the Reaver's popping out just before the dropship hits. So if he runs away with the Reaver instantly, he won't be here to help defend. But if he if he notices straight away, he can use the Reaver to help defend. The Reaver should be popping out any second now. And it looks like he's actually not going to matter. The Reaver's actually so slow that he's actually going to kill so many probes anyway. And the Reaver's not out in time to do anything to help defend. The Dragoon's could be desperately coming in from the natural expansion. I'm so shocked that Best did not anticipate any kind of Vulture drop play in this game, especially with how well-known uh, Light is for this kind of play is finally going to start using this reaver to zone out and ward away these vultures but he's getting out with all three vultures he's maintained and he's getting into the natural expansion to scoop up another probe kill or two it's actually crazy value fit now we can go back into the main base if this reaver was a little bit greedy and tried to move away now you'll be able to come and get me more damage here but no look he can just come in poke see if there's any opportunities and then just run away again like life's playing on fire right now and he has a wraith out to kind of shut down any follow-up shuttle play mm, wow 
really great planning here from Light and like you said, just not a great understanding of the type of style that Light is capable of bringing here. Not respecting the Vulture drop and he's really going to eat a lot of damage. Okay, he does lose these Vultures finally. Unfortunately, not yeah. a great target on that uh, on those last vultures. I think he hit the nexus a couple of times there, uh, rather than probes. But he's done enough damage at this point uh, that I think he can leave and and just be happy with his position. Keep that dropship alive. Maybe use utilize that later to try and shut down a base with a tank drop or something like that. But just go into a normal style here. Make sure that he doesn't take any damage from this reaver, and he should be good. I think he can definitely hold. Like there's not going to be a great a timing, I think, for best to try and break light on three bases here. Uh, light should be able to take that nice and nice and uh, smoothly. And <laughs> I mean, uh, let's tee him up here. Let's tee up best for that bust on the third base. <laughs> yeah, as you're saying that, I'm like, ah, it's best still. So I mean, I can see him like breaking pretty much anything, even the Great Wall of China itself. So I don't know about that, but yeah. It likes looking great, and he's going to be following this up with a five factory play to punish the the Reva tech of Best as well. So probably going to be setting himself up for a nice little push here soon. Uh, and the the, the SAV is in position to take third base soon, but right now he's just worried about gearing up for this five fact production. So we'll give him a lot of counter play to Best, who's going to be relying on this Reva slowdown uh, to deal with that. And he's only got like four gateways for production to five factories, which I can tell you now, spoiler alert, that favors Terran. Um, there's no real exact math on how many gateways two factories you want i could sit here and tell you it's like 1.5 gateways per factory it's not but depending on what stage of the game is you definitely want to have either equal gateways to factories but usually you want to have more gateways than factories and in this case best does not have that yeah the reavers do mess up the math a little bit on that but uh, yeah you definitely want to have more uh, in general gateways than factories and it's just the the damage that has come through for best so far uh, on best so far the probe losses have have really hurt him uh the you know the slowdown with the the mines being there and you know just the lost mining time has really uh hurt him here and uh, light hasn't been hurt at all no damage has right. gone on to him this entire game so you know how much of a macro beast he is he is definitely going to be hitting his stride here getting out those factories as quickly as possible and yeah he is going to go into this third base i think he's just going to construct that great wall the the massive wall of supply depots here pretty soon and i mean just taking no damage light should be in a winning position it's just up to best we'll see what he can pull out here what kind of bust is he going to go for to try and stop light from grabbing this very quick uh, very safe third base yeah, and Light's very min-maxed as well. Like, he squeezed out these four Goliaths at the last possible seconds. Now he can start two-shotting the shuttles and one-shotting the observers and what have you. So he's now going to be having all the tools in his arsenal to fight the kind of style that Best will be opting for here. It's just that Best is also so good at executing this. So even though it looks like Best is like in a bit of trouble here, he will still be able to play um, a good game. Uh, he's taking it on curve fourth base here. He's taking it at four, 10 minutes. That's a pretty standard timing to take your fourth base as Protoss and if Light chooses to play passive here like he looks like he is doing he's making his science facility in second armory right now it looks like he wants to just turtle on three base and here comes the poor man's recall into the main base three speed shells only one Wraith here to help defend and a single turret here gonna be bowled over by the Zell Reaver potentially could do a lot of damage here he's gonna be pulling out those SUVs way to safety but now the two tanks gonna be isolated does pick off the Reaver though great targeting fire from Light gonna be punishing this drop play from Best and killing both of the Reavers shutting this down really quickly actually uh, uh, he did he dealt with that far more efficiently than i thought he was going to yeah he dealt with that really really well having those two tanks uh in the main um actually changed the math so much he was able to target down the reavers really really quick and for a moment actually still now best is behind in supply he lost so much supply to that or with that drop and now his chances of actually busting light on three bases are Close to zero, I think. I know right. it is best, but uh, just, there's so many. <laughs> there's so there, there's so many shuttles that were thrown away. Um, that was kind of the 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 busting force there, and now he's gonna have to go into a fourth base, maybe even a fifth base, try to grab another 
uh, main base, and he's going to have to hold that dreaded light push, that light push that's going to be so, so strong in the late game when he's got that 2-3 or 3-2. That's when he's going to be pushing out and grabbing another base, and it's going to be very hard for Best to hold on. Yeah, meanwhile, Light doesn't really have to do anything. Like, just maintaining the game stays pretty good for Light right now. There's no carrier switch or anything to worry about. He can just go to 2-1 upgrades eventually, 3-2, and then be in a very great, very strong timing position. He can attack at his leisure. He could he, he did have a little bit of a timing window there, to be fair. That that drop going so bad in the main base could have been a trigger there for Light to just push and go, and maybe actually could have killed Bess, but he also doesn't want to risk just throwing the game because one way Terran players can lose is by, like, kind of botching their move outs and... He didn't necessarily need to commit to that as well. So he wants to try and guarantee the game state as much as possible, maintain his great position. And look at the supplies right now, pretty much dead even, which is just so favoring a Terran player. Going to be throwing down more and more factories to gear up for this uh, mid to late game phase. And Best likewise going to be throwing down all of his gateways. But I would say Light definitely coming out on head in pretty much every metric. The only thing that could be a big tempo swing here for Best is some really critically great storms in the follow-up place. Yeah, I know you're saying with the, uh, the timing window that was missed there by light like he could have tried to kill best there but the you know we've got double armories rolling right now it it seems like it's much much better here the the path that light has chosen just to wait for those upgrades to come online and uh, just stick with his game plan here diving in one more time oh man this is really not going well the storms do come down but they're not getting the scv kills that he really needed uh, for the committal that he, he threw into that natural. He was hoping for a massive amount of kills, but only a few SCVs end up going down for Reaver. I think two Zealots and a few Storms as well. A couple of uh, Templar in, in the mix there. That's pretty rough, man. He's just thrown away a lot of his splash damage but in a timing that, you know, Light might be ready and willing to move out now. He's probably got two one. No, two ones not quite done, so he's not quite ready to move out here. But he's got those factories online. He's at 179 supply. He's about ready to move, and there's not a lot of splash damage left for Best, and even more of it's getting picked off here. He's going to run in and pick off a bunch of these Templar. That's really, really good play from Light. But yeah, this is great value from Light, getting the absolute maximum value out of these cheap Vulture units at this stage in the game where he doesn't mind refilling on those, and he's not worried about a counterattack bowling him over by losing the Vultures either, so he's happy to trade those out for some uh, kills. Even more High Templars going down. Yeah, this is not looking so good. Uh, yeah, but the timing for 2-1 is about 4... Yeah, look, I was about to say, it's about 14 minutes 30 is the earliest, and about 15 minutes is standard. So he was about he was waiting up another like 30 seconds or so for that 2-1 to finish up, and it's just now finished at 14 minutes 30. Uh, exactly so he's really ahead on the curve on his grade timings this is about as early as they will they will be finishing without like being super crazy so right now everything's going lights way and pushing up on this high ground plateau like this going to be able to secure a lot of ground from best easily great methodical play here from light this is the this is the light that we're used to seeing right this is the old light this is the light that uh we used to love to watch here in the KCM and in the ASL as well. It's just so standard, so strong, methodical play. But right as he's moving out here, Bess is going to drop a huge amount of units into the main. He drops some storms as well uh, with these zealots. And he's going to kill a lot of SCVs here. But Light's just not caring. He's going to move straight across the map. And with all the shuttles that have been thrown away right now. There's just not that much here for Best. How is he going to hold on against this massive push that's coming his way? Well, he's going to go for a huge counterattack here in the north side of the map. A ton of Zealots and Dragoons are going to make their way over towards this third base. Is this the right play? I think this is a desperation move right now from Best, uh, realizing that he was never going to be able to fight that army. He's trying to make this game too chaotic to call. Yeah, it's definitely a desperation play here. This is like in ZVT where you're trying to like get value with the Crackling and Ultra by keeping the Terran spread as thin as possible, but in this case, it's not really going to um, go the way he wants it to, and it's not going to slow down the, the efforts of Light either and pushing pushing this natural expansion, shutting out the third base, and both getting a snipe on the third base while also threatening the rally point and Best's uh, ability to pursue any kind of uh, longevity in this uh, survival series. So it looks like it is going to be a Terran victory here for Light. He's all but uh, checkmated Best in this game. Here. There's no uh, gateways online at the 12 o'clock just yet that are churning out units to provide any kind of additional uh, threat out on the map. So I think Light has uh, pretty much done it. It's just he's now got to dot his I's, cross his T's, and make 
make sure he like kills these other bases and doesn't let him set up in the 12 o'clock. He is going to get some storm drops shutting down these tanks here, but he's already killed the Nexus, so the job is already done. Yeah, the Nexus goes down. The probes don't have a good way to disappear, uh, to, to, to escape here. So, um, all these probes are going to go down. We've lost three bases. We've managed to kill the third of the Terran, but the army is still undeniably strong right now. It's going to push in here, kill all the probes. Ah, uh, man, this is, uh, this is messy, but it's still going to be a light victory, I feel. Um, unless Bess can pull out something really amazing right now, some some dazzling storms are necessary. He needs to, it's you know, possible. yeah, he needs to get like a big chunk of tanks uh, with a bunch of storms and and just wipe out that force. But I just I don't see that quite happening right now. He's gonna drop some zealots on top of these uh, these tanks here, but Light is being very cautious as he moves up towards this top center to shut down the last mining base of Best. Yeah, he's trying to desperately churn out a few Templars and Zealots at these three gateways that were set up at 12 o'clock, but it's not quite the critical mass that he needs to bust out. He's going to try and go for it anyway and just dive onto him with these shuttles. Screw the shells being targeted down by those Hellfire missiles, and Demetrius is going out onto these tanks to help buffer against those incoming storms. Pretty good storms from Best, but it's not going to be enough. He does clear out some of the tanks, but there's just going to be so much left over for light that he won't be able to be stopped in shutting down these bases. Some Zealots were coming up from the, the bottom left quadrant of the map to try and reinforce his position. There's not that many vultures left over, so he will kill quite a sizable chunk of this army, actually, and maybe even clear out the entire army potentially here, actually. This is crazy from Best. He just barely had enough, like, reinforcing zealots to kind of deal with this, and I think he just wisely cleared out enough of the vultures and those initial trades that now he has some ability to come out onto the map and slow down Light here, and if Light's not careful, he could start to give the Great Ape a way back into this game. He was shaving him all game long and kind of torturing him and tormenting him a little bit and exposing the, the muscle fibers underneath his fur by like, te like taunting him with like shaving off more and more of his fur but now looks like best has had have enough of it and starting to you know flex his muscles a little bit and come out from the jungle and start to put the hurt on like just a little bit wow i'm uh, a little bit shocked here to you know what uh Bess is able to do in these scrappy situations. Light looked to be in just a dominating spot, but uh, even with all of the shuttles going down, Zealot somehow managed to get in there and deal that damage. And look at that, he killed the armory to prevent the three, uh, the third attack from coming online. So that's another feather in the camp here for Bess. That's another you know thing that's going uh, his way right now. And Unfortunately, he's going to walk into some mines here. Okay, that doesn't actually go off. Somehow, that do didn't manage to connect. But, um, curse is curse. He does manage to, you know, get some mines. I guess he's picked up all of the observers. I don't see an observer around. Uh, I, maybe the robo went down. Was, was No, the robo was in the main base, so he still has a robotics, but he lost the observatory, so he has to build another observatory. Looks like it's up in the main. Uh, he will eventually get that out, but... Light's managed to grab the third and the fourth, so he does have some great production right here. He's even on supply, and there's really not much that Best can do about it without clearing out mines first. Yeah, it's still Light's game to lose. Uh, Best somehow managed to claw his way out from almost certain defeat, and uh, but that was mainly because of the, the poor decision-making from Light kind of giving... Uh, best a little bit of a window there as long as he's careful and tentative with how he approaches this and just kind of sits back and just keeps active out on the map with some vulture raids it actually probably go pretty good for light still and he will almost certainly take this game i think as long as he doesn't make any big blunders but best is just there waiting for him to make some key tactical errors to then just like snatch the victory away from him oh wow we're gonna have a bunch of probes go down here i think great uh maynard there with the probes to keep them alive uh, eventually, these are going to be tracked down, these vultures here in the top corner, but Light using the opportunity opportunity of that time afforded to him to go ahead and throw down some mines out in the middle and cut off more reinforcements from easily making their way out here onto the map for Best. And Best does have his natural backup in mining once again, but his probe saturation, his probe count is extremely low at this point. He lost so many probes. Uh, over at the center left, all of those probes ended up going down, so he just doesn't really have the economy there anymore. He doesn't have that smooth economy that we're used to seeing on a best, the one that can churn out units like crazy and overwhelm the Terran player 
uh, in the mid and late game is just not available to him right now. He's going to try and squeeze out as many units as possible here as light starts to push, but it's still kind of a losing game right now. He's still having a really hard time uh, getting into that economy once again, and he's losing the Zealots for free right now. Uh, looks like the Vultures are going to get jumped upon. Light not paying attention to that, so he's going to lose all of his Vultures, but... Uh, I mean, he's just getting little bits of value here and there, and he's starting to explode ahead in supply. Yeah, it's looking like a more and more certain uh, victory for Light, especially because Best didn't try and take a third base yet. He's still just on two bases, two of the Terrans, two bases, so this isn't really favoring Best going forward. He's just barely clinging on to life at this rate, and it's going to be another little skirmish drop here in the 12 o'clock position with a Siege Tank and Vulture, forcing another delaying of mining as the probes are forced to pull back to safety, and any kind of slowdown on the economy of Best is quite crippling at this stage, especially when he's actually behind the Terran in his amount of economy available to him all right here comes the final gambit from best he's gonna try and break the fourth base if he can get up here it would be amazing that emp goes down on the templar stopping the storms from coming out there's one storm on the high ground the d matrix uh, tank there on the low ground actually crushing everything gg that GG. was really well played by light there uh, a few small blunders but overall great planning great decision making he manages to hold on against the great ape. The charges from best are not going to break the back of light here. He manages to take down that great ape. Take him down a notch. I was not expecting that, honestly, from light. No, no. It like, um, he kind of performed really well. Um, there was only one tactical decision he did wrong with the vultures and the natural expansion. They kind of went into the, the probe line and got drilled rather than going behind the minerals to guarantee damage. So there was like a few tiny tactical errors he did, but other than that, he was playing more or less flawlessly. And uh, there was a bit of a, a window he, that was afforded to Bess while Light was trying to close out the game where maybe Bess could have clawed his way back in, but he still had everything back at home to kind of deal with whatever happened in the contingency. So yeah, I was really happy with Light's performance so far. Yeah, I think uh, throwing away the shuttles there from Best at the when when Light was trying to attack into twelve, rather than waiting for his Zealot rallies to make it their way up there. If if he had maybe come in with the Zealot rallies and then dropped, um, you know, not losing as many shuttles, he might have had an opportunity to counterattack. But you know, he didn't have any observers, so he couldn't really counterattack through all the mines and and hope to deal any damage. And uh, Light was afforded so much time after dealing. All of that uh, critical damage to the infrastructure of best he manages to get the fourth base online and holds on to everything really really well played a nice pvp there we're going to jump into our next game with light on a spree it's going to be a zerg player coming out next will it be action will it be queen it's going to be game number three action versus light is going to be next here on What's this map called again? R R uh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Radion. 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 That's the one. That's the one. How you doing today, Shin? Doing all right, bud? Ah, fan Davidose. I feel absolutely fantastic. Happy to be here in this new season. Okay, see, I'm casting with my boy, saying SC. Happy to be here, as always. Happier than usual to be here. Nice, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that we're back and that this, uh, this tournament is going to continue here. Um, yeah, it's always uh, an open question whether the 25 year old game will still have you know another season of the great uh, these great tournaments but with sponsors and new sponsors being introduced i feel like there's more uh, hope than ever that this can continue uh, to you know, keep going on into the future i don't think we're going anywhere anytime soon um it's, it's just an awesome feeling to have those new sponsors even though it's not a sponsor for us i mean it's a sponsor for us and that we we get to keep enjoying kcm i mean yeah like even though we're not benefiting directly i would argue that we're benefiting indirectly from that sponsorship right and what's good for starcraft is good for us at the end of the day and so any small joy that we can like appreciate we are going to be in full force because i mean i love this game i don't know about you saying i'm pretty sure you love this game too and uh we want to see it like you know not only survive but thrive and this is the kind of things that need to happen for that to take place absolutely and look at this action I'm gonna send his overlord straight across him this is something i've been i've been doing recently too is yeah whenever versus terran you got to get that overlord up into the top part of the map because then you can scout both both of those naturals up there right. um I, I think that like the the 
idea right off the bat was just to send it to the closest spawn, um, you know, right across this uh, this open gap here and get that information as quickly as possible. But having the Overlord over in the top center is invaluable if the one of those two bases is uh, turns out to be your Terran opponent. Well, there's one other consideration is that the rush distances on this map are so huge that an 8 Rex is even slightly less likely to be occurring. So he's even more confident about this Overlord scout being able to go out there and be completely fine. Uh, and it is, it is a bit of a meta thing to do, even so players doing it on maps like uh, Retro and what have you, to try and optimize their Overlord scouting patterns to try and get more eyes on the bait natural expansion areas by you know doing this kind of riskier scouting pattern. And it does seem to pay off more often than not, so it would be nice to see this in the meta. I've been kind of advising it a little bit in my coaching sometimes to some players. On certain maps, it's definitely valuable and viable. Yeah, I think on this map, it's definitely the viable solution and uh, to, to getting that information on the Terrans in the top uh, part of the map now we've got a marine here gonna block that out with a couple of drones here just until some links pop and light's gonna be very careful he's gonna be checking to see how many links are actually popping with four out here i don't think we're gonna see any more pressure coming from light four is like kind of the magic number uh we're not gonna want to go in um, what was three? <laughs> you're gonna get three lings out. Is that uh, is that the plan? You here? kill one, I guess. Is that your build order? <laughs> <laughs> That's my build order. Is build two pairs of lings and kill one, so I still have the supply taken up. But I don't have the fourth ling. Yeah, it's a good idea. Right? Uh, hiding a pair of lings here on the high ground. He's hoping that light will come in with those four marines because four marines do just barely beat. Okay, he's he's pulled them out now. I thought he was gonna be trying to bait that in, but. Formally, just do barely beat uh, the four links, but when you have those extra two, the extra two links, it just uh, tips the scale and you will end up losing. So, uh, not gonna have any interaction here. He forced the six links. Light's gonna be happy heading back home with those Marines. Yeah, so Light just basically did like a little early game naked Marine pressure build, slowing down the natural mining of action. Didn't get those two drones mining in the natural quite as early as he'd like. Does slow down the economic prowess of uh, the Zerg here. And he did want to go for 2.5 hatch as well, so slowing down any mining is, is, is always gonna be good uh, for Terran versus Zerg, but especially if you're doing something like 2.5 hatch, it slows down the optimization for a build that's that tight or so much already that action's not going to be enjoying that so any kind of pressure from the Terran early is going to be giving him a lot of value just slowing down the, the, the powerhouse macro of the Zerg player and action is such a strong macro Zerg and not only is he a strong macro player but he's very aggressive as well as being macro orientated and yeah he's gonna force out some sunkins as well this is very early for those sunkins you want to be throwing them down around now and he already threw them threw down one about 30 seconds ago so that's not a good situation for action either the medics are going to start to pop out here and the marine com uh, attack will commence um he will have to get a couple of sunkins down at his natural to hold this but because he did go for 2.5 hatch you can't just uh you know wait bank on them uh, the, the Muta's popping out in time, so I'm gonna run in here with some links. Oh, he doesn't target that down quite properly. He allows the Firebat to get one more shot off, and now the second Firebat can come down and force these links away. The links are probably gonna try and run back in and, you know, get some scouting information, but this one sunken is not done. He's gonna target it down. The two sunkens do finish. He will back off with the links there. Don't want to commit and lose all of those Marines, but that was quite scary for a moment there for action. I'm really confused why he made the sunkens the way he did. I think he made the first sunken too far to the right and then realized if he made the second one directly to the right, then the, the Terran could do a run by behind the minerals on the left and he didn't want that to be a, a potential eventuality. So he wanted the sunken a little bit further forward. I'm a little bit curious about why he placed the sunkens like that, but I think it was just a small adjustment to placing the first one a little bit off. Hmm, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, only action knows why he put that sunken right there, but he's going to have the mutas coming across the field looks like not a lot of mutas in the stack right now yeah i mean action's actually quite well known for doing that where he'll like just bank the bare amount of mutas initially to force you to start dumping into turrets and then he'll gradually add on the mutas up into scv sniping range now having the eight here to come into the natural and start killing a couple of these scvs anyway regardless of the turrets now being set up Looks like the turrets are kind of targeting one of the mutas. He's not going to lose any just yet, but uh, he does have an extra muta, so he can uh, still target and one-shot mutas or one-shot SCVs 
even if he loses one muta um that kind of magic number there is eight uh, for a dive uh, even if you lose one muta you can still keep one shotting but he's not even lost a single muta yet and he got quite a few SCVs, so I, I think he's feeling pretty good with this run by as well killing off quite a few marines it looks like and maybe getting some SCVs, some good information maybe slowing down this factory here as well could be good but he's gonna get a couple SCVs looks like maybe one two no actually SCVs got a lot of health man yeah, I would have loved to see him kill the, the, the SCV building the starport instead there and then maybe go for either the turret or the gas SCVs because going for the mineral SCVs there usually will not yield you much results and as I like showing you there, like you can be able to shut that down pretty easily. Ling's not usually that useful in these counter attacks unless you catch the Terran with his pants down completely. So it can be hard to uh, get value out of those links unless you're sniping turrets or something when they're undefended. But now it looks like action stayed on eight muters for so long and then uh, only just now starting to go up to a full stack. And meanwhile, he just power droned all the way. So he's got such a healthy drone count, he just doesn't have a third base. Right, the third base being this late is a bit scary uh, in my mind, right? Having uh, no third base up right now and he didn't even get that turret either. Oh man, mm. it's not really going actions way here he is going to go right into a hive very quickly but he doesn't have that many mutas out right now he's losing even more mutas um and this marine force is quite scary he could threaten the t base in the top right and there's not really too much that uh action can do about it he scouts it just now oh no does he, does he actually see that the marine oh the fire bat up there i don't know if it actually saw it it looked like it went in range but maybe it didn't uh, he might have like shift clicked it over there to like check for it and go back and it's possible he didn't send the the, the fire bat further enough in to check it or it's just on uh, shift command and he already has spot in it he just hasn't told the fire bat to do anything else yet meanwhile action doing a pretty good job of shaving off some of these marines he's staying behind the bio ball to kind of cut off reinforcements and also maintain uh, vision on the bio ball at all times and when they're squared up and stimmed he's gonna back out and chill and now he's gonna come in for a big pincer maneuver here and try and clean up this whole bio ball with the muta ling and it's gonna be a pretty cost efficient trade here for him without any kind of fire bats points but light maybe smells this and he's gonna maybe to come back to safety of his wall and natural expansion but so far it looks like uh um if if it like was uh, foolish enough to try and push out i think action has all the tools in his arsenal to, to wipe this out but if light was clever and just stayed back right now he could just rejoin his forces with the forces in his main and be able to actually defend against this really smart move there by light he sent one marine out and saw all the lings there that one marine right there absolute mm. hero spotting everything and keeping the entire force of bio alive there he was able to pull back just in time to avoid getting surrounded and you see this number of lings here uh as a light i think you're gonna be pretty confident that you just sit back and build up into a big marine force with some vessels you should be able to push out on the map and those slings are not going to do too much since they weren't able to pick off that first bio group yeah i mean even though action's third base is so late it doesn't matter too much he is going for this 2.5 hatch style and now he can transfer a lot of drones up to this third base he doesn't have to worry about like dealing with any kind of timings where he's like at risk of like just being broken so he needs dark swarm desperately he's actually doing pretty good he's gonna go straight into crazy zerg style so he's got like an early evo chamber he needs to make sure he doesn't lose anything to this fireback because like just getting slowed down mining here is already annoying if he uses any drones to this fireback it's it's pretty bad so with good micro he should better at least keep these drones alive um but yeah i think he, he is still at risk of losing a few of the drones if he's not careful yeah well, links are gonna come up there and deal with that and drones will get back to mining here shortly i hope there are like five drones just sitting at the bottom of action's uh, base in the top right that aren't doing anything right now he is mining the gas but you got to get all those drones to mining here it's a very tight build what he's doing right now like you said the third base is very late and it's fine as long as he gets everything mining. Okay, he does get it to mining now. Um, and he mm. will be uh, saturating that base. And Light is starting to move out now. Can he actually crush this? I don't think he can anymore. This Ling Force, I mean, Lings are great uh, when the Marines are in low numbers. But when they're in this high of number, I think things just fall apart very fast. Oh, no. He's not pulling out. He's not pulling out. Okay, he does finally see it. But uh, a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Yeah, a lot of damage. 
a lot of damage there. I mean, oh, he, he, this mutiling force though is very weak against this this big of bioball. So he, right now he just needs to delay as long as possible, allow him to churn out as many ultras. He's waiting for Kindness playing to finish up. He's got uh, grades on the way, like he needs to. So he will, he will have the upgrades uh, afforded to him to be able to fight against Light. Light's own gr uh, upgrades will not be um, be able to like catch up to to action. If if action's got his timings down, then he should have these small windows where he's got more armor than the Terran has weapons upgrades and that'll afford him like 20 30 second windows where he can overrun the bio but with his ultra link combination now plus two is finishing up for light so i think that should be roughly on par with the plus two timing of action and this, there's a strong enough sunken wall here that he shouldn't be able to break through when i do something like this the terran player just sends bio groups to the top right and kills my base why are we not seeing that here light is just uh, maneuvering towards the natural which has like eight sunkins ready for him and the ultras are g growing in power they've got that four armor now they are all going to get irradiated here which is really really bad you don't want to allow your first few ultras to get irradiated that first engagement is all that matters and actually we are going to see light move up to the top right now and this is the dangerous uh spot right now action uh if he loses the space he could just straight up lose this game there is a nidus canal here so he can jump ultras through the nidus and try to flank this army but Oh no, he's uh, he's really losing control here. Light is so powerful. He's going to uh, run right up here into this base and kill the Nidus. And with the Nidus going down, I mean, all the Marines are going to get on top of the, the ramp and you just can't save the space. I know he can medic block on the wall and the ramp as well and make it impossible for action to come up here and defend this base. It's a real nightmare situation now for action. He's going to basically have to just sacrifice this base and then not be able to produce the kind of ultralisks and scourge count that he needs to be able to finish light off. And light will then be able to take his third base eventually and be pretty much chilling for the rest of the game. And action's going to try and do some counter attacks now, see if he can punish light with all his bio being up in the top right. Maybe there's some small window he can punish light, but I imagine light's just turtled up in his natural expansion and expecting this honestly this looks like one of my games guys gg is called action <laughs> taps out it's like one of those games where i just don't have the right idea you know like i'm like oh i'm gonna make ultra um but i took the base on the high ground in the top right so i can't make a sunken wall um so of course right. my that's gonna die and i just <laughs> everything just kind of falls apart there for action just like it happens like i said in my games but um yeah i feel like don't you don't you want to take if you're gonna play a style like that why doesn't why, why don't you take the 12 o'clock for action you get that high ground base then you can set up a bunch of sunkins there and then you have two sunken walls right yeah, but he's trying to min because he took the third base so late. He's trying to min max, and he only wants to make one set of sunkens. He's right. playing it like if I have to make two sets of sunkens, I'm too far behind. So he's playing it with the uh, intention of not having to make sunkens. Whereas if he was doing a more normal crazy zerg style, he probably would have taken the natural top right and sunkened up both. Right, and and taken that a lot earlier so that he could get that mineral right. income. Yeah, makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Unfortunate result there. Action really falling flat here. Um, and Light just dominating, man. He's got three kills so far. He really wants that beef, man. He wants that beef <laughs> from H-Mall. Um, that's the that's the extra little push that he needed, man, I guess. That's the motivational push that he needed to, to bring out his A-game. I mean, that'd motivate me getting some nice prime beef. I'd be more than motivated to play my A-game. Okay, Mini coming out next here versus Light. Um, gonna save Bisu in the back pocket there, maybe as a sniper for Soul Key. Um, I, he's definitely better against Zerg, but Bisu's been showing a lot of great play versus Terran as well recently. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Bisu's kind of come into his element, and one of the things that were lacking in his play of times old was his PVT. He always was good at microing and could overcome like players like Flash with his fancy Dragoon micro, meanwhile mac macroing back at home like a god and what have you. He's, he's always been known for that, but never really having the kind of win percentage necessary in PVT to really shine as a, a the, the true pro as god that he is. So hopefully now we're going to see a different kind of Bisu in the future. Uh, meanwhile, though, we're going to be having a mini versus Light on Troy, and there's a lot of shenanigans that can occur on Troy, so I imagine Light's going to want to play super safe here because he knows of the potential of, like, you know, even just, like, pro proxy 2 gay is a, a potential in this map, right? Interesting that they're sending out mini for this Troy fight, and it is going to be 2 gate. 
Mini is going to put on a lot of pressure here, and one thing that's really fearsome for Mini is, is his uh, early game micros, Zealot micros, out of control. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's only probably maybe like players like Bisu and what have you, which could kind of rival that Zealot control, and Mini seems to like do it best in PvT specifically. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a real challenge for Light to hold on against. Is he going to go double... Uh, barracks is he going to you know build a bunker here what is he going to do to deal with this push because uh, the moment that he finds out about it he knows he he's going to have to do something dramatic because uh, if he loses control of his uh, main here if he loses some scvs or you know loses some marines there's always the option for mini to actually just target down those assimilators as well yeah, it gives another little condition here for Mini to cause a lot more havoc with this early Zealot pressure. Doesn't necessarily need to finish him off in the main base with the harassment, so it gives you even more viability in going for this early pressure with the two gate commitment. So it does give him a lot more compensation of available and higher EV with these Zealots going forward. So that's why we see him being so aggressive with this choice here. He knows that there's a lot of potential ways he can win the game from this position. A lot of potential ways to win, and there it is. He sees exactly what's coming here, and he's going to get into the main and see that it's a, a follow-up. Not a quick Nexus follow-up, but instead it's going to be uh, Dragoons that are going to be following this up. And he's already attacking the ass Assimilators. This is his goal. He's not even going to try to dive on top of these Marines. He's actually going to try and focus down the Assimilators as quickly as possible. And this is going to be really bad for Light. If he loses control of this natural... If he's not able to, you know, transfer SCVs or, you know, get a base on the low ground, this is going to be, or on the high ground, excuse me, this is going to be really, really bad for him. He does have a Vulture out, so he can start to kite, but every moment that passes here is more damage onto those Assimilators, and uh, closer and closer he gets to actually being locked out of this uh, natural. Now he, he actually can't send his mech units through here. That's so sad. Yeah. Yeah, only Marines, SCVs, and what have you will be able to fit through this gap for the time being. So this is really sad going forward. He's going to have to think of some interesting creative ways of dealing with that. He's either making a starport right now or instantly making a command center to float to this island base. Yeah, he's got to float something out. He loses two of his Marines. He's going to get pushed back. The Vulture can't do anything. The Vulture's just going to sit there, and maybe he can even target down this other assimilator now. This is really, really rough for light this is just so troy man troy is is such a broken yeah. map it's crazy troll troy yeah absolute yeah, troll map if one thing i think is really funny though is like the simulators are protoss buildings and they have a lot of hp like 450 shields 450 uh hit points so they do take a little bit to kill in fact i think a lot of players complain that you know the protoss gases have like more vision range and more hp than any other gas but still cost the same and in this case it kind of does help the terran play a little bit there it took him a longer time to kill those but still not able to really deal with the fact that he did kill them anyway so yeah i have to wonder Wonder, like what can Terran players really do deal with this I feel like he should have started uh, a second barracks or something maybe uh, once he identified that two two gate in the natural expansion of mini but maybe that was too late by then maybe build a bunker I'm not sure man it's really really tough to build a bunker at the assimilators to protect them uh, it's it's not a good situation no matter how you slice it and um, Light is going to go for a drop here, try to deal some damage, but Mini is already ready in his main. He's got everything set up. Uh, there's no speed on these vultures, I don't think, so um, I don't think he's going to be able to deal. Wow. wow, that's out of vision? Wow, that's crazy. The that is Dragoon wild. barely not going to see that, and it doesn't really matter though. He's still going to be in position to defend against this, but it does allow him to unload and have some potential of damage here by laying mines and maybe still even be able to get out with this uh, dropship. If he wanted to, he could like navigate out of the base here with these uh, three vultures still maintaining their lives here. Looks like one. Okay, there's the speed upgrade coming down, and uh, one mine did connect, so the dragons are a little low. Uh, he's got to be very careful not to lose these dragons, you know, not to hit any more mines here. Oh, he does hit a couple mines there. Uh, yeah, just a miss control group or something like that. I guess he put all the dragons in one control group. Sends them into the main, unfortunately, and ends up losing one, but... I, that's not the damage that Light needs. Light needs so much more here if he wants to actually take this game. I, I feel like, what do you what do you do in this situation as Light? Do you just 
float your factories out? I, I wonder, because well, it's going to be so hard to slide everything over this uh, over and over and over. Initially, no. Initially, no, he's going to just ferry units out, but he may want to start making additional factories in the natural expansion and then maybe consider floating out his production as he has, is able to secure more territory and what have you. But for the time being, he's going to just be like relegated to ferrying his units out, unfortunately. Oh, such a pain in the, in the butt. I mean, StarCraft is a hard enough game as it is, and you've just made it like three times harder because you have to do all this ferrying um, just to get your units out of your main base. Such a pain here for Light, but he's going to soldier on here. He's going to try his best for his team. Definitely motivated by that. Uh... <laughs> okay, that pylon is pretty low. Yeah, you're right. That pylon could be targeted down. He's actually going to chase these couple of Dragoons out onto the map picks them off that's a pretty good start but look at mini's army he is uh ready and yeah. fully prepared for this attack yeah if there was a any chance that there wasn't quite enough gateway units here for mini there was a little window here where we could snipe the pylon on those two gateways shut down the protoss production and then hit a window where we can at least shut down the mining in the natural expansion and maybe have a little win condition as a result but mini just barely with a nice critical mass of dragoons they're going to be able to shut down any kind of potential play from light another follow-up drop in the main base though with the sim city going to make it harder for them to get the value that they need and there is two dragoons in position to shut this down so light's not going to be finding the kind of uh, tempo swing winging uh, plays that he needs to kind of claw his way back into this game. It's going to be shutting down a couple of these gas pros, but it's not the kind of damage that he needs right now. Mini instantly sending another probe onto that gas. Very well done by him handling all of that with the uh, good placement on the buildings. If that a drop had come in right as the attack was coming to the front, I think it would have m made things a bit sloppier for Mini there, but he was able to pull back in time um, after chasing down those, uh, those units. Um, now another drop here going to come down into the main. A tank in the back as well. This tank could do a lot of damage if it targets the correct probes, but uh, actually pulling the probes to deal with that, only getting a couple of kills there. Uh, and the vultures will go down as well. The dropship does survive, but Mini, you know, hanging on everywhere. There's still no natural here for Light. He's just finished that CC. Now he's going to start to float that, but things are looking pretty desperate right now for Light. Yeah, they are definitely looking pretty desperate. Uh, saying. I, I would say as well, I'm pretty impressed with Mini's ability to defend against these drop plays of literally just like two Dragoons at his main base each time. Like, I'm really impressed that he's not even committing that many Dragoons to defending and he's still doing a great job of it. So the fact that he's taken such little damage with such few units to defend has been pretty impressive. Ooh, this Vulture could get the probe. He's not paying attention. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to stop that. Shut that down. The probe will get the Nexus down here. And Light's just, or, Mini's just going to continue to expand. And yeah, we don't see those factories being thrown down. We don't see any floating out either. He's having to pick up SCVs to bring them to the natural. Everything is so broken and, uh, and terrible right now for Light. This is such a rough situation. Mini here going to start to push forward. Maybe start to pick off some of these uh, mines and look for a bust here. But Light desperately trying to get all of his units out to the front, dropping, picking up, dropping over and over and over again. He can only pick up two tanks at a time, four vultures in one dropship. So having two dropships is an absolute necessity at this point. So lucky that he, or so, so good that he uh, kept those dropships alive after dropping the main over and over again. Yeah, even though this situation doesn't look super good for Light, I will say I don't think the game's going to end anytime soon. I actually think this game's going to go on for quite some time. I imagine Mini's going to try and close the game out with maybe a carrier play. I think he's just going to go up to like four bases and then do like a big carrier switch. Or maybe a, he, might, he might do Arbiters. I just don't think Arbiters make much sense when you've already got Light so boxed in. I feel like carriers would be a great play here to make it almost impossible for him to get the kind of critical mass of um, Goliaths out onto the map to defend against that. Yeah, that's uh, that's dirty. That's dirty. You're you're already shutting him into such a, a rough situation, putting him into a box here in the top left hand corner, and then you're go gonna go into carrier as well. That's uh, that's that's some filth actually, and I like it. Mini is probably gonna go that direction. Ooh, the shuttle could get picked Whoa. off here. This is a big pick. He gets a shuttle. Um, the reaver, of course, does get dropped out, but just picking off that shuttle is uh, very very annoying for. Mini, and we're going to have a drop coming out around the map 
utilizing these dropships pretty well. You know, getting some units out here on the map is a great idea. Maybe you can come in with a tank or two and shut down the base in the bottom right. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I think there is still a window here for Light to do something, and the supplies are kind of still respectable for him. It's not like he's super behind. He's only 20 supply behind Mini and has some potential play with these raids to catch this shuttle here in the main base. If he kills this shuttle as well, it would be huge. Unfortunately, though, took some shots from the, the cannon there and also the phase disruptor shots. Of the Dragoon's going to shut that down. It's a nice little uh, tank double vulture drop in the, the bottom right. Going to do some damage, but I don't think it's going to find the kind of damage that Light's looking for in this game. These, these, these are the kind of plays that Terran players need to make to kind of carve, carve themselves out a bit of an edge, a bit of an advantage to work with. It's just that they're never going well for Light. Mini's always shutting them down with just the bare minimal. Unfortunately, Light's not going to get any... He's even losing these two wraiths in the center. So, so far, everything kind of going wrong for Light. He's completely shut out on vision on the map as well. He has this dropship but still out, sharking around the bottom right. Going to be trying to maybe drop some more additional units here in the bottom right and try and get some damage done. But I don't think there's even that many probes to kill down here. I think he's lost everything in the drop and he's just hoping to get this back home uh, that oh, okay. dropship that dropship is so necessary now. right now because he's only got one um what is he gonna do like how is he gonna get all these mech units out onto the map i mean he has to make another yeah. drop he's gonna make another drop and maybe send these over towards the main i'm not sure what he's doing here oh he's actually gonna drop here no okay the command center is gonna come down onto that island though this is such a hard game to play as terran man it is so rough he's actually gonna take this base okay interesting dropping some goliaths a tank um a little island there uh float out the command center that's interesting well, controlling that zone is super important because if he didn't have any units dedicated there, there would be no AA. It'd just be like dead zone for like shuttles and carriers and arbiters that kind of like have a field day up there. So by dropping off the Goliaths preemptively, not only can he expand to that base safely, but also like control that zone against any potential air units from flying directly into his main. Hmm. Well, we'll see how that ends up going for light. I mean, the, what he's doing setting up for like four bases is... Uh, it's a great long-term play, but if it's if uh, we see Mini going to Carrier, he's just going to be locking himself into a late-game play with Carrier on the way. That could be a really bad situation. He's going to start ferrying his units over and leapfrog them to this, like, low ground and then attack the main base from the low ground in this, like, island area here. So he's going to oh launch gosh. an assault onto Mini's main from the low ground. It's a very interesting tactical player. He's going to doom drop the majority of the units into the main base while also having additional units either to ferry in or to also assault from a low ground. I don't understand if this is going to work or not, but potentially this could do a lot of damage. I wonder if he's going to land here, try to kill the assimilators. Oh, he's going to try yeah. to kill the assimilators. Yeah. yeah. Give it to him, Light. Yes. Give it to him, Light. Give it to him. Give it to him. Can he do it in time, though? He needs a lot of DPS to do that. The army's yeah. already positioned to try and shut this down. There is a shuttle there to get some kind of play. One of the gases goes down, so now the Dragoons are locked out, but the Zealots can still get in here. He's going to quickly unseize these tanks. He's desperately unloading more and more units to see if he can overcome the small critical mass of units in the Protoss' main base. But more rally units coming out. Light's going to have to scoop up and get out and dip. But he has frustrated the production of Mini here by killing this assimilator. Now the Dragoons can't get out so easily. It's going to force Mini into his own little uh, ferrying situation of trying to get these Dragoons out onto the map. So it does kind of frustrate Mini a little bit here. Yeah, that wasn't... Uh... Oh, no, 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 the dropships! Oh, my gosh, the drops going down here is so bad. Oh, that's really bad. That's really bad. <laughs> well, we, I mean, it would have been nice if trouble. he, did, yeah, we're in very big trouble, but it would have been nice. Maybe, uh, light focus down the, the assimilator on the right, because I think you can hit the assimilator on the left from the low ground. So, uh, that might've been a better decision, but I guess, uh, light just wanted to get rid of that. He lost a lot. To pick that off, you can see he's 70 supply behind uh, Mini now. That's because he's thrown away a lot of units to actually get that kill. But we'll see how effective that is against Mini. It's so much later. The Mini has such a better economy now that he can absolutely afford to build a ton of shuttles and just kind of ferry stuff around or maybe just go into Arbiter or just go into Carrier too. And then he doesn't even have to think about it. Um, 
And any of those are great options now, whereas Light really was punished a lot harder by the early initial uh, assimilator kills. Well, these shenanigans might railroad Mini into thinking more Gateway Man style because he's going to want to maintain a healthy shuttle count to keep ferrying out units. So we, we may see Mini not really go into carriers here and instead just try and rely on his shells. He's losing all of these shuttles to the Goliath shots, but we'll now get on top of these tank Goliath and clean those up nicely, but at the cost of his shuttles. But this still is a pretty good trade for Mini, especially because considering Light does not have many units out on the field right now. So losing these is pretty costly. Oh, pick him up. Pick him up. He's going to try and pick up everything. He does Ooh. get a few of those units back out. Um, not the greatest here for Light, but at least he managed to save something out of that uh, that spot, and he killed off some of those shuttles. So, I mean, trading back and forth here, I think it's ultimately going mini favored, but maybe Light still has a chance in this game. Yeah, I, I don't know though. It's going to be really tough because he needs to secure a fourth base desperately. Meanwhile, Mini is free to take the entire map. So he's going to have like three rally points worth of gateways if he wants. And that's kind of like en enables pros to kind of do whatever they feel like in this game. It's going to be a, a very uphill battle for like going forward. He's going to be like Sisyphus trying to push that boulder up the mountain quite a few times until he finally gets it if he does get it. Ooh, we've got storms here too now. Uh, that's really... That really feels bad, man. How are we ever going to stop this with storms coming in on top of these Goliaths? Pretty good, uh, um, you know, splitting there, keeping the Goliaths out of the range of the uh, storms pretty well. Uh, but some Zealots are in here. That uh, that storm didn't go too well. That killed all of his own Zealots. But, uh, you know, Mini is going to keep harassing this situation, keep harassing this base as it comes down. Light will get on that fourth base, that fourth gas, critically, but we're already at 17, 18 minutes. Uh, things are going to start to mine out here pretty soon. Look at that main base already mined out. Um, the natural is going to start to get low as well, and look at that. Poor carrier production down in the bottom right. It's exactly as expected. Yeah, I mean, it was only a matter of time. I, I expected this was going to be the play from the start. I just thought that maybe the things would change a little bit and he'd be slowed down in doing this because of wanting to have more shuttles and what have you. But it looks like he's got such a large bank from having all these bases. He can just go straight into like throwing down four Stargates right away. He can, he's going to have a power spike from four carriers straight into eight. That's a very sizable amount. that would be very difficult for Light to overcome, especially when he's having to worry about ferrying his units around using the dropships and what have you. It's going to be very awkward to defend against this for Light. I think Light's going to go for bottom right here. Oh, no. He's sending his uh, his dropships over towards the main now. A bit interesting. I, I thought that maybe we would see, you know, like eight dropships go down to bottom right or bottom left. Try to kill the assimilators and kill the base down there. Um, scans are coming down. I don't think he's seen the carrier transition yet. He might be completely caught off guard by that, but he's already got a lot of Goliaths out. It's just the fact that he can't get them out on the map, which is the real big problem. He's going to land here in the main, start to pick off this assimilator. He should be able to get it, and he should be able to get the whole main, actually. Yeah, it's actually really annoying for me to deal with. And it's going to be some time before those carriers come online and start to become a big threat for light. And they also will be even longer before their upgrades become more and more relevant going forward. So there's still a little bit of hope here for light, but it's looking like with these storms trades going on, he's not even going to have the critical mass of lives needed to survive against the carriers going forward. And if Mini does keep them hidden all the way until he has eight, it's going to be very difficult for to light to deal with that kind of tempo swing. Uh, it's just so bad. Trying to fight with dropships against shuttles is so, so rough. He's going to try to fly through the middle of the map. There's a bunch of uh, Goliaths here, or there are a bunch of Dragoons here on the left-hand side. I mean, Goons are not the best value for your uh, shuttles, but um, sh definitely Storms out uh, does anything that the Terran player can drop out of their uh, dropships. He is going to drop back here into the main base. Maybe he's trying to kill off these pylons or something like that. Four carriers are out now. They're going to head over here to deal with this small drop of units. And Templar popping out. They are going to get killed. But Mini just has so much money here. He's going to pick up one more time. Here we go. One more pick up. A lot of Goliaths are going to be in that. And if he's got enough Goliaths, maybe he can hold off the carriers long enough to kill the main. But... Uh, it's it's just not a great situation, man. I think he might tap out when he sees the carriers coming in. Yeah, well, it's, it's an interesting game state, though, because he is forcing Mini's hand to use the carriers to defend and maintain this main base, mm -hmm. but that might be just what Light needs to start to react to this qu uh, more quickly, because he hasn't quite got a full amount of interceptors here, for example. If he has got enough of Goliaths here to hold off these carriers, it'll now allow him to 
to min-max against these carriers more efficiently now that he's aware of them fully. So there is still a little bit of hope here for Light, and he could maybe... If, if, if Mini makes a few mistakes and tries to come too deep into the main base with the carriers and Light snipes like just one carrier, like things can really go bad for Mini very quickly. So um, Mini needs to be very careful. He is going up to five Stargate's worth of carrier production. That's absolutely insane. But uh, as long as Mini doesn't make any mistakes, I think he's got this game in the bag. But I still think that there's some small blunders that he could commit if he's not paying attention and would allow Light some windows in here. You know what? I think that a Wraith switch could be huge here. Yeah, because we're about be. to pick off all of the main base. We're going to get these two Robos. And there's not yeah. going to be a lot of production of Observers. There's probably only a few out on the map. And he might not have any with this... Uh, you know, with this uh, base, and oh my god, he's taking the, he's taking the base here, just wow. outside of Mini's uh, main. This is craziness from Light right now. I don't know if he can hold on to this, but he, this, yeah, this is uh, some Chadley play for sure. Yeah, I'm really impressed. I mean, it's not to say that this is like um, the way he should be playing, but given the game state, it does make a lot of sense. And he's kind of like trying to, he's having a bit of a gambit here, assuming that things are going to align for him well. And that's the way he needs to think to guarantee some kind of comeback potential in this game. And if he does set himself up like this, there's a chance that he could overwhelm the carriers. But he's at eight carriers. Now is the time he needs to get on top of these carriers and start sniping them one at a time. One of the carriers does fall in short order, but it's like one or two of them soften oh, up. Oh, the storm. Critical. Look at that beautiful storm on the mineral line killing both scvs tanks and goliaths alike all in one big beautiful uh, thundery mess there and i don't know how he's going to stabilize against this kind of carrier count while also having to ferry his units around on the map it was a very valiant gambit for him to play the way he's been playing but i don't think there's going to be the critical mass of goliaths uh, being afforded to him to better just force these carriers away yeah the the storm changes the math completely on all of these fights uh, you know, you've got, okay, you've got all these shuttles, you've got the dragoons, you've got the carriers. Uh, they're blasting away uh, at each other, and it seems pretty even, but as soon as the storm comes in, it just completely tips the math in the Protoss' favor, and carrier number is getting way too high here. Just a couple of storms can come down on some Goliaths and uh, wipe them out, and, you know, there's just no way for Light to uh, maneuver this into a victory. He's realized it. He's tapped out. GG is called. Mini going to take this game away in a very, very dirty manner. Shutting down light here on Troy. He seemed unstoppable, but Troy stood in his way. Yeah, Troy is such an interesting map. Not a map I'd enjoy playing on, but it does allow us to kind of pers pers spectate and get a perspective on some very different ways of playing and some very interesting game states like we just saw there. So I do like the map for that reason, that it allows us as observers and casters to kind of see a glimpse into some crazy, like, horror, like, demonic parallel reality of StarCraft that doesn't quite exist in other maps. It's time for Soul Key to hit the field here. Is going to be going up against mini cross map on Citadel. A very interesting map that's uh, given us some pretty good games. Me on the ladder, though, specifically, I've had a lot of wacky Zerg versus Protoss games. Um, a lot of really late game plays where the Protoss is just going to try and take <laughs> half the map and sit there in their little corner and not allow you to get close to them. Well, I don't think you're punishing the Protoss players enough, saying I really think uh, we need to go back to some cheesy basics and show you some full hatch hydra timings and stuff, and uh, you know, do some pre-storm timings and punish these greedy apes on the ladder that are trying to take the thirds of five gateways and do two gate into expansion and all this kind of crazy nonsense. I think you might be right. Um, but mostly, what I'm I'm having a hard time dealing with is uh, the the uh quick five that that tech that nice tech play um quick five cannon on the other side of the in, inside the main base in the top left that's that's what i'm really having a hard time dealing with you know that build order five, quick five five uh cannons uh, on the other side of those those eggs and that little ramp pretty tough to break yeah, I mean, there's no real way around it besides just having good scouting and preempting it and preventing it going up in the first place. It's kind of like when you're playing against Reva Sair. Like, if you allow them to get that ninja base going, then you're just, you're in trouble. But if you do have active scouting and you shut it down, then you're in the great spot, right? It's just mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the hard things about this matchup is sometimes you can just be shut down because you scouted it too late. Yeah, exactly. Um... <clears throat> 
Easier said than done, of course, but that's the way to do it. And, you know, we're not going to see games like that, I don't think, with the... With Mini here versus Sulky, Sulky really on top of everything in this matchup. And he's actually been showing a lot more aggressive play as of late. And this is a fake, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's an absolute fake. He's just trying to get him to pull drones, which he will do. He will pull a few drones here because he is worried about... This is Mini, after all. Mini is known for doing his cannon rushes and what have you. So, But now, look at this. Just going to be cancelling that right when he wants to start to send a, a probe to go and expand in a moment here. Just pulling some drones, wasting some of Sulky's time. And Sulky has got the name Need Money. Well, Mini's going to say, well, I want some of that internet money, but it, it prevents him from mining that. Yeah, it's not going to get any mining going here with a couple of uh, drones already pulled off and the Zealot arrives. Can he get this base down? No, he's not going to have that money. He's not going to have 300 when he arrives, so he won't be able to put down this base. That's super annoying right now. Not able to get your third hatchery down is a real mm -hmm. pain in the butt. But look at this. Solki actually went for a 2 minute 30 um, gas here, I believe. That gas just finishing up now. Uh, this is something that we've seen a lot from him recently in, in the ladder series that I've been doing. He has right. been doing really, really aggressive stuff uh, with that earlier gas going into link speed and then uh, range and hydra speed uh, with the bust yeah. as well. So it's it's been really, really strong lately. That's a great way to play against um, Gateway first as well because you're, you're usually making 12 circlings anyway against this build. So if you do go gas first, get the link speed out, at the very least, it makes you very safe against the Zealot pressure and able to have some counter play opportunities against the Protoss player. But you also can, behind it, be obfuscating and denying scouting that you're actually going for like a 973 type play as well. You don't even need that many Hydras, just like four to six Hydras with range or speed and you can gun down the cannons over the, the, the wall in the natural expansion while the links soak up the zealots and deal with the rest. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I think that could be what we're seeing, but you know what? He's not mining gas. He's just building links right now. So I think we're actually going to get a, a speed attack uh, here into the natural, and then the links that are popping out are going to deal with these two yeah. zealots. This is this is really good play by uh, Solki. He's going to get a big advantage here, if not just straight up win the game. Yeah, I mean, Mini thinks that these are the only zer the Zerglings that are out on the map right now. Now he sees no drones mining in the natural. He's going to be like, uh-oh, because now he knows that all these drones that should be mining here are instead going to be Zerglings that are now going to be barreling down into his natural expansion. There's only just now a cannon being started, so he can start target firing this gateway. So and Mini's going to be in full desperation mode to try and hold this. He might even try and build the forge behind this gateway as it goes down to try and re-block the wall up. I don't think that's going to work. Mm, yeah, he's getting ready. He's ready for it. He does build the forge. The forge pops out. Oh, got it. Really? Really, really nicely done. Keeping that forge in the wall. And he's building two cannons behind this. The cannon's going to finish. Wow, mini yeah. holds. Mini holds. And he's actually in a winning spot now. Yeah, I thought Sulky would be really quick, quick, quickly, quick enough with his move commands that you'd be able to deny this forge being placed. But he built it in just the right spot that the Zerglings need to travel a whole hex grid worth of movement to deny it. And mm -hmm. if you're quick enough with the probe, you can just build that almost guaranteed if as long as you're fast enough. Yeah, he is fast enough here, and Mini quick on the draw manages to hold that off. And Sulky is in a dire spot now. He built so many lings. And Mini is under no pressure to move out because he knows that uh, he's already denied a lot of drones. He's slowed down the economy of the pro uh, of the Zerg player. Uh, him as a Protoss, he's just gonna sit back, get himself into a good spot. You know, get uh, you know, his speed up, his plus one up, get some Corsairs out here, kind of harass, see what's going on, and uh, just move into you know a better and better position over time. Yeah, I mean, there are some arguments you might be thinking, well, why doesn't Sulky just try and kill him right now? And you're, you're kind of right, like a four hatch Hydra or something could be the kind of thing that would finish off Mini, but it's just that Mini's so good with his scouting and identifying those kinds of potential threats that probably that would not work. So what we'll probably see out of Sulky instead is him just desperately try and go into a normal macro game, try and squeeze out as many drones as he physically can, can muster, and then just try and play a super standard from then on. It's just, unfortunately, that'll probably end up in an eventual loss for him as unless Mini makes any critical mistakes. And I, I think that uh, Sulky might have made an error uh, with that first attack, with the with the Ling attack. Did you see that there was a gap on the left-hand side of the Zealots that could have been exploited there? He could have ran by, maybe killed the cannon, gotten into the main. Uh, with the follow with When you're building that many follow-up Lings, you might as well run by into the main, and then you can bring the Lings from behind and kill, try to kill the cannon uh, from inside the main. Um, and then the links from the front, you know, they can threaten, force the zealots to stay in the wall. But, you know, things just did not go well um, 
Well, I'd have to, with with picking I'd have to up the gateway. The game, yeah. I'd have to look back at the game state again, but I thought that the doodad was sticking out enough that the zerglings wouldn't still fit through, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, there was one ling that kind of slipped by, and then uh, Mini quickly plugged that hole after, and Sulky didn't really oh, okay. react to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit rough here, and now I think that we're going to see Mini close this out slowly. He scouted everything. He sees that it's just going to be a macro play from Sulky, and that's just playing right into Mini's hands. He's fine with that. Uh, he knows how much he slowed down Sulky, and he's just going to go from a uh, you know a position of strength here into the mid game. Yeah, he does get one zealot snipe, which is a pretty pretty good compensation. Just taking some wind out of the sails of the move out timing of Mini, but honestly, it's not going to be the kind of game winning thing that he needs going forward here. He needs those kinds of things to happen over and over again to just kind of stabilize and be equal in this game. And instead, he's going to probably bleed off a few overlords and. If, if Mini's very active in hunting down the Overlords as well, it'll be very frustrating for Soul Geek, because I imagine he doesn't want to have to make a Spire just yet. He's going to be trying to min-max his macro as much as possible. Yeah, I don't think he has a Spire here. I think he's just building Hydras, and he will have to uh, get a Sunken Colony. The position is very nice in this base, but you can see he can't even afford six hatches. He can only afford five, and mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to see this Overlord die while the Zealots are attacking. Super annoying stuff. Um, those zealots are gonna go. Uh, they're gonna just go to work on the lings here with the plus one, picking off a lot of them. A DT is coming in now. Um, the two DT actually, just a classic mini play, just adding on a lot of DTs to make it really, really hard. He's gonna go after the eggs, and this is this, this base is farther away than on most maps uh, from your from your natural right. It's so hard to transfer an overlord over, and you know that he didn't go for overload speed because he is trying to min max and get himself back to this yeah. game. He can't afford that type of thing right now and just gonna keep killing these eggs over and over this is a win here for mini uh just denying these eggs forever uh will eventually force sulky out of this game it's a small oversight from sulky he should have already had like two or three overlords chilling at that base but because he then was reliant on the overlords being built because there's so much dps from the side blades of two uh dts there's just no way he'll ever get an overlord. he might actually pop out one overlord here before he gets the hatchery snipe but the damage has already been done like just having any kind of denied mining time here is like already costly enough and he's still killing the eggs actually at the perfect sequencing to not let any overlords hatch he's actually gonna get the hatchery as well on top of that that's great compensation for his effort i mean yeah this is this is uh a nice technical takedown by mini he didn't need to do this he didn't need for this to work uh he still would have been in a great spot with his next push out which is going to be that two uh base like eight gateway timing where he's going to have a huge army with dragoons templar and everything but uh the fact that this is just crushed uh, Sulky, basically in the crib. He's he's not even outside, or he you know he's hardly even been born here. He's just barely getting off the ground. Yeah, he's just getting completely destroyed. Finally, an overlord pops out. My God, it's been so long. He's just gonna. <laughs> uh, you know, kill that sunken colony, and he's already killed all the hatcheries there, so it doesn't matter. Running up here, he's going to try and kill some High Templar. The storm should be just about done here. I mean, we're already at ten and a half minutes. He should have storm by now. Um, so Sulky just kind of banking everything on hoping that maybe he doesn't have storm. Maybe I can break through there. But even the Zealots here are fighting very, very well and pushing back these Hydras. And a DT could always just pop out and end this, right. this attack here with the... No overlords over there at that natural. There's really no hope for Sulky. Yeah, he's he's basically just waiting to GG. He's probably just still processing the loss. He, I imagine he's very annoyed about the way this game has gone as well. Like, it's a very frustrating thing that happened to him. He's just processing the loss and is going to GG out at the last minute. Yeah, GG. Really well played from Mini here and full on um, desperation from Sulky trying to come in back into the game by cutting a few corners like he needs to. Going to be able to allow be, uh, Mini to just like um, punish him in a very stylistic way all right sharp coming out here versus mini what is this uh stat we've got in the bottom right is that for retro we've got five and O oh for Terran. um maybe this is actually a sharp versus mini yeah sure i think a sharp versus, sharp mini, versus mini yeah which is pretty insane did he uh did he five O oh mini that's uh that's wild i mean that, that might just be their like you know kcm televite. yeah yeah that might just be those kind of games but yes it's possible that th this does happen sometimes even players that are bad in a matchup can still have pretty impressive records against individual players where they're like able to deal with that particular style of the player 
I don't think the Sharp is bad in this matchup at all, but uh, yeah, that's that's a really impressive uh, stat to be taking down Mini this many times. And Mini here, uh, he still has the all kill on the table. If he can overcome that hurdle, that, you know, that 5-0 or that 0-5 here versus Sharp and finally get a win over him, then he could potentially get an all kill here in the first week of KCM. I'm sure he's beaten Sharp outside of um, those televised games, so to speak. Mm. It's just that, yeah, when it comes down to it on these like big screen games, it seems like Sharp's been getting the better of Mini. And that can happen for a lot of players where there's like one guy that's just got, got it over you. I think, uh, for example, with Lava, it was last. Like Lava was just, when, at one point, was just crushing everyone online. And the one guy that he couldn't do that to was last. And last isn't even like necessarily the best Terran player. He's a very good Terran player, but... He was still able to frustrate someone like Lava and make him go on full blown tilt just because of his style, right? Right. Yeah, it's just somebody's just got your number. That one guy who uh, you can't overcome, you can't seem to get past it. It sometimes it becomes like a mental block almost. You just can't play Absolutely. against that one player. I mean, I've had that happen to me as well in the past, so I, I can kind of get some kind of empathy going on what that feels like. I do know what that's like, especially when you're playing against a much stronger opponent to you, someone that you know you've lost to a lot in the past. It can make it very daunting going into it with the kind of mindset you need to eventually start grinding out those wins eventually. But yeah, I mean, sometimes it doesn't happen, though. Sometimes you just can't get over that mental block. And, you know, sub even subconsciously, you're like self-sabotaging yourself in small ways because you're, you're altering your normal a game play to try and compensate for this uh, weird mental game you're having to face right well i'll tell you what uh this game right here could be really important for something like the asl right if we end up seeing mini versus sharp in the asl the result from this game you know could mentally affect especially mini who's you know, we Absolutely. always talk about him as like a, a very emotional player but uh, you know if he ends up losing this and he continues that loss streak he could be seriously daunted with the fact uh, of taking on sharp in the asl but if uh, he manages to overcome sharp here you know that might same mental block might not be there anymore Absolutely insane. One thing I would also like to mention is that Mini did the very safe two gate um, follow up variant of the 12 Nexus. Like he made two gateways and he cut probes to make sure he's making two Dragoons as well. So he's cut a lot of corners to make sure he's safe. So even though Sharp won't necessarily go for um, a big push to kind of punish it. What he's instead doing is doing 11 gas vulture timing, which gets a very quick vulture out here to kind of punish these probes just before the dragoons come out. So he's getting a little bit of damage here. He gets one probe, not too bad, but he will have to send the, the vulture back home to deal with these zealots. He doesn't have a lot of greens here, and he doesn't have a bunker either. So without the bunker here, this is going to be very punishing. These dragoons are going to come as well. He's actually going to block with the SCV. Oh, man, this is a pretty good move here, blocking with the SCV, uh, slowing down those dragoons on the ramp for a little bit. But I don't think it's going to be enough. It's not going to be long enough. I think that Mini might have just overcome this uh, this hurdle, man. He's actually going to get in here and stop this bunker. And with the bunker being stopped, he can deny the CC. He's actually going to run right up into the main. Oh, man. Okay, yeah. no, just kill the bunker. Kill the bunker. That's that's the safe play. We're delaying the natural expansion for so long by doing this. This is a great adjustment play from Mini. He knows that Sharp wants to do this kind of gambit where he comes with the earlier vultures than usual because he has the slightly faster gas. But to compensate, he sends the Zealots just cross map uh, to deal with um, Sharp initially right away. So he has a much more stronger timing. And now target firing down mines, just skirting out of the range of the mines as well to try and get as much damn DPS out onto these Terran units as possible. There's only one mine remaining to try and walk this away, and Mini knows where it is, so he can also uh, shuffle forward and try and counter that. That's why Sharp's being so proactive right now. He needs to defend this mine, because it's kind of the only thing that's giving him a little bit of life here. Yeah, he's trying to activate the mine and pick it off, but being a little bit conservative there, not getting close enough to activate the mine, and we're going to have some more mines out here for Sharp. Sharp's still not building a bunker here. He's being a little bit risky because he is kind of behind right now. Just getting the SCVs to work, to mining uh, as fast as possible and relying desperately on these mines to hold off the front. He will have to build a bunker eventually, I think. But he's going to try and poke out here a little bit. Let's try to make some space so that he can get some more mines out in the front. And he will do so. Mini just going to back away. He's done enough damage here. I think he's just going to take uh, what, he's ta what he's got so far and just run. 
Well, he's isolated these pockets of Dragoon, so shaving off some of their hit, uh, shield hit points and hold points uh, is great here for, for Sharp, because he knows that he, on back, on paper he's always going to win those fights, so Mini being unable to, to join forces and deal with that Terran threat does allow him to chip away a little bit at the, the HP of those units, and now that the shields have been depleted a bit, it will make Mini a lot more uh, hesitant and trying to do anything fancy in the coming phases, so both players probably just going to sit back, and Mini's going to take his third base, wait for uh, Shuttle and Reaver to finish and we're going to see a bit more of a standard game after that early shenanigans yeah it wasn't as catastrophic as i thought it was going to be here but uh, mini does have a bit of a lead going forward with the third base now going to be thrown down uh vulture tries to hop over it looked like but maybe he didn't have the mine i, I thought that he was going to try and put place the mine and get it over that wall but um, not going to get lucky there. Not going to have that mine, maybe. I'm just going to scout around, make sure there's not any other bases going up in the bottom right. But this is uh, this is a rough spot, spot for Sharp. And Mini at a pretty decent advantage is going to be his game to lose here. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm feeling like Sharp still has a, a, a somewhat of a decent chance in this game. Mm. It's just that the edge is so far in many side of things. I would argue that maybe Sharp's win percentage is somewhere between like 30 and 40% uh, on sure. paper, assuming perfect play from both players. Yeah, we're going to have to see how uh, this this first robo unit does if he's going to be able to get damage with that reaver if it's going to be shut down completely because lately i've been seeing sharp shut down reaver pretty darn well he's been doing a really good job of making sure that he doesn't take damage to these early reavers and that is so essential in this day and age of uh of pvt yeah, he has got a pretty good setup. He, he's got just a bare minimal amount of turret coverage, but now that he's also getting Goliaths and what have you, there's a chance here that he doesn't take... Oh, he needs to be careful not to uh, take that mine hit. Mini is fast enough that he won't take any damage on this Reaver as long as he's paying attention. He can't even use those units to sweep the mines if he was being very aggressive and needed to do so, but... When he doesn't need to do so, he's not going to go, go for those kind of crazy gambits where he's going to mine sweep with the shuttle because there is a chance for that going wrong, even with good execution. Yeah, he's going to come around this left-hand side. There are some units here waiting, ready uh, to try and shut this down. Three glass, not the magic number. It does take four to two shot the shuttle, but there is some damage on the shuttle. So Three? I thought it was four. Four to two shot. No, uh, I'm, I'm making a joke because oh, okay. of the, the John line of this. Yeah. <laughs> Three is the magic number. I'm just, I'm just being silly. Yeah, it's four. Okay. Gotcha. Um... <laughs> The, the shuttle not going to be able to get in here and do any damage. I mean, Sharp shut this down pretty darn well, but still it's going to have some utility here. The the Reaver can be used to slow down whatever push uh, and base that uh, Sharp tries to take. But you know what? Sharp actually in a pretty decent spot here in terms of, you know, the bases that he can take. He can easily take the 12 o'clock. It's very close to his natural, and uh, that's probably the easier base to take. Like if he was in, for example, bottom left here, uh, trying to take the base in the center left, that one's really hard to to grab. Um, the top, the the base in the top center is much much easier. The the ramps are way closer to each other, so you can siege up on low ground and cover the the alternate ramp as well. Right, yeah, but the the, the ramps so close together. I, I Light did a video about that, um, where you can cover both ramps so easily from the the low ground that those bases are both easier to attack and defend. Um, uh, introspectively, so it doesn't really matter if you're both attacking or defending. So in this case, he probably wants to expand there. Um, but that is very close to Mini, so it's not necessarily the, the safest option for him in the sense of how close he is to the Protoss player, but with the terrain in mind, it might be the base he wants to take because he has a, a clear lane to, to access it with his unit flow that's not, not disrupted as long as he's got this bridge under control. And also he has this uh, advantage of being able to defend it from the low ground on the left-hand side. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what we're going to see here. Sharp gearing up to make some sort of move. Actually, he's pushing forward across this bridge. This is not what I was expecting. This Reaver shot there. That tank was trying to run away, but it wasn't able to, to make any distance between itself and the Reaver. And gets a pretty decent shot there. Tanks are spreading out now. Um, Sharp looking, gearing up like he's looking to move towards the middle, but... Um, I don't know if that's actually the plan or if he's just opening up a lane to get vultures out on the map to start to do some harass. 
I think that was more it, it just guaranteeing these vultures getting out onto the map without taking any damage and what have you, and also being disguised, going to be um, potentially, if there was no observer checking for them, would be able to maybe catch many of his pants down. But I Mini's mean, on top of those, on top of that sort of thing, so he's not going to be able to uh, be caught unawares. But he's going to be able to isolate these true dragoons, try and box them in to get the mine detonations, and finally does manage to get that little uh, nice little skirmish trade going his way. So that's a small win for Sharp and. It's not going to be the kind of thing that gets him back in the game, but if he can start to take these small like skirmishes and get them tipping in his direction, it will start to even the, the balance of power slightly in this game going forward. Looks like he got another kill down there in the bottom right. Uh, maybe a Dragoon just running into a mine or something. A little bit unfortunate for Mini. He's going to try and transfer probes, but the probe transfer is going to be caught here. This is exactly what Sharp is looking for. This is the, the sort of play, the sort of like casual uh transfer and you know uh, not careful play that mini uh, might be getting punished from in all of these games that sharp is always on top of catching this might be the reason why mini is not able to take down sharp is things like this are sharp specialty and it seems that mini is just not prepared for them yeah, I mean, you have to be, like, escorting those pros with the Dragoons, and he was not on top of that. He was a little bit lazy, and now going to be paying the price. They're not streaming forward, and there's, there's there's maybe not quite enough critical mass to overcome this, but so far, Mini's doing a great job of killing enough of the tanks in the front that the tanks in the back didn't have enough time to set up, and now these two tanks in the front close together are going to be taking a lot of splash damage from those Reaver Scarabs, and they will to be taken out from the phases from the shots of the Dragoons very quickly, and now just three tanks remaining on the low ground, one on the high ground, but the shell's dumping out units onto the tanks and the high ground, while the Zealots on the low ground and finish up those as well. So beautiful trades here from Mini. Gonna be putting Sharp into a very uh, peculiar predicament here of not being able to cost efficiently trade anymore now that he's lost so many units. He's barely got enough to hold on with the Goliaths and turrets, but this streamline of uh, Zealots coming out of the rally point from the top right quadrant of the map is gonna probably spell disaster for Sharp here. Yeah, I think this is all down to the very opener here. Um, right, we, we've got that probe damage, but that probe damage is not gonna matter with the Zealots bearing mm. down on the natural uh, the bust here is good. Mini gonna make his way through. It looks like the CC burned down, actually. Oh, no, there it is. It's, it's being repaired up in the top right-hand corner. It is still alive, but it's, I don't think it's gonna matter. We're pushing right in here towards the natural, killing off a ton of SCVs, shutting down Sharp here. Uh, he just didn't have the critical mass of units to hold on against that bust. And, you know, even though... I mean, maybe keeping those vultures back at home might have saved. Oh, God, 11 kills now. Maybe he could have held on had he not been setting up vultures everywhere. I don't know. The setup seemed pretty good. It just felt like Mini was just too far ahead. That bustle was always going to be able to bust him, I think. Yeah, I mean, for the time being, Sharp is alive, but he's certainly not going to be kicking for much longer as more and more rallied units going to be making He's just going to GG out. He knows that even if he does somehow weather this storm, he's going to eventually lose the entire game game because Mini already has that fourth base online in the bottom right so even if he does somehow defend is still going to be in a world of hurt and wow Mini going to be taking out Sharp and Sharp is a very strong player um, both in TVP um, and against the, uh, someone like Mini in, in particular it seems having such a good record against him so I'm sure Mini's going to be happy about that finally getting a win over Sharp. Mini getting over that mental block Taking out Sharp here, that might come into play in the future, man, in some future tournaments. That could be a factor. He was able to take out KCM here. Uh, or he was able to take out Sharp in KCM. Um, big, big win there for Mini. He's going to continue his spree. Might be able to get that all-kill prize uh, for the first week of KCM. All he needs to do is take out Royal. Uh, it'll be Mini versus Royal in our next game. All right, Mini here sending out a very early probe right now. Looks like he's going to be gas stealing Royal on Blitz Y. Uh, one of my favorite maps in the current map pool. What do you think about this one, uh, Shun? Uh, it's very interesting. I'm not even sure if he's going to gas steal. He might be making gates in the main or the natural or something, by the way. I don't think that's even a gas oh, yeah, steal. That's... that's like a gateways in the main type deal. I wasn't fully appreciating how early this, uh, this probe actually was. And Mini is, yeah, going to throw down a pile on here. Oh, boy. You know, Mini is, oh he's really prone to doing stuff like this. Even in no, the, the highest tiers, right? In ASL finals, he's done this right. before. 
you know me then. Now, if Royal is smart, though, he knows that this this is actually a quite a common play on this map. And he might now check this gateway spot, and then he can pull SEVs to deny this from going up. He can, if you pull, like, six SEVs, you can kill the gateway before... Oh, this is really bad. He's even blocking the gateway being placed from Mini. So he's now forced to place it slightly further away, uh, slightly delayed. And now he has the option, if he wants to, to pull six SEVs to kill this before the Zealot even comes out. And here come the SEV pull. Yeah, the SCVs are going to get pulled here. He will have to leave one SCV to, to defend. Oh, God, four probes going to be pulled. Oh, this is Mini. huge for Mini. This is huge for Mini. Okay, so, yeah, the SCV pull usually does kill the gateway in time, but if you pull even just one additional probe, you can stop this from um, be becoming an issue. And if you pull this many probes, you can even just, like, win straight off the bat after following this up with the probes helping the Zealots coming in and dealing a lot of damage in the main base and drilling onto the Marine spot that's usually safe from the Zealot can now be killed by the probes. This is huge from Mini, potentially. Yeah, this is... Oh, he does lose one probe. That's a big oh. deal. Uh, probes are going to go to work on some of these SCVs now. Even more SCVs have been pulled to ensure that this gateway goes down. He's really getting it low here, but he will just barely, I think, finish it off. The probes are doing their best to kill some of these SCVs, but it goes down. Oh, my goodness. It goes down. And all of these uh, probes here are going to try to, fl you know, go into the main base, try to deal some damage. Maybe pick off this first Marine, but the SCVs are going to be pulled once again. They should be able to fight. You should just be pulling the healthy SCVs, leaving the, uh, you know, damaged SCVs back at home. Probe is going to get the Marine. He does get the Marine. Okay, okay. Pretty good pull uh, control here from Mini. Mini trying to get, make the best out of a terrible situation here right now. He's got one pylon. That is it. It's on the other side of the map. He's got nothing back at home in his main. He's trying to kill more probes. He gets another uh, dr uh, another SCV here, and he's not able to get another Marine. Okay, he's got one pylon back at home. He's got one gateway. How do we play out this game from this position? This has been so insane already. He did kill enough SCVs to turn this into a normal game, believe it or not. He wow. just barely killed enough to maybe turn this into a normal game. It's not going to be an easy game, but it's technically winnable for Mini. It's very bad for Mini, but it's it's actually somewhat okay. He just barely did enough damage to Royal that he has a small win percentage, but it's actually still Royal favored. Yeah, I would say so. Definitely Royal favored. I'm surprised that this is even going to be a game, though. With the gateway going down, that's usually G. GG, but well, I guess, the, the, yeah, with that number of kills, it's going to be all right. Well, he's, he's expecting to lose the gateway, but with the Zealot being finished. With the Zealot and yeah. the probes, you usually have enough to overcome the turn player. But even with just the probes, with good micro, you can do some pretty good probe rushing strategies to really mess with the SUVs. They only have one, uh, no attack, they have no attack range. The fusion cutters are not that great at connecting with the probes. If you do have a good probe micro, you can also drill on top of the Marines and like do all kinds of crazy damage with the particle beams. And yeah, Mini does have good enough micro to kind of make do with those situations and kind of find the compensation he needs to turn it into a normal game it's still going to be tough for him because he's got these three marines against one zealot in the natural expansion and that's a micro position for the terran player which he can win so this mini still not has, has not survived yet he still can just lose to the technical um, ability of royal here with the marine micro I would love to see the replay and, and see how close that Zelt was to popping out because it seemed really close, man. Super, super close to actually popping out there. And I'm sure Mini was throwing his head back in his chair when that didn't quite finish in time. The uh, SCV is focusing that down was really, really big. But now we've got some Marines here, but two Zealots is going to be enough to push that away. He's going to get into, uh, you know, Cyber Knight score. He's going to be able to get into his Dragoons here pretty soon, but... Good, good micro here from Royal. Looks like he's going to be keeping most of these Marines alive and gunning down both of these Zealots. Two Marines do die, but I mean, it's, I don't think he has enough here to actually push across the map. Maybe with the Vulture popping out, he can get over here and push, maybe get a bunker down. I don't know. It's it's going to be a tough hold for Mini, either way. It's, it's a tough hold for Mini, yeah, because it's, the Cybernetics core has only just recently started, so he needs the Zealots in this choke to, to make sure he slows down the Vulture enough, because the Vulture, it, it, while able to kill these Zealots um, forever and infinitely, it could be slowed down on this like middle lane if there were like say two or three zealots available to him so instead he's going to be in full panic mode and he's forced to throw down like uh shield batteries and what have you to not only like block the choke up a little bit but also give enough uh, recharge on his units to just not die here and he's even going to be relying on probe drills on the ramp because the zealot will not hold forever 
Yeah, the probe drill on the ramp. Um, looks like he's not going to be able to catch the vulture. Uh, might be able to stop it from running away. No, the vulture is going to loop around and just fly into the main base. It looks like, oh no. Going after the probes here at the natural. A couple probes are going to be killed off here and the dragon will finally pop out. But every single probe kill right now is so, so big. He's even going to be able to loop around in the main. I'm really disappointed in Mini that he didn't have the composure to delay the probe transfer to the main, to the natural expansion. Like, he lost so many probes that he didn't need to. Like, he could have just delayed the probe transfer for just, like, 10 seconds and then been totally fine once the Dragoon can get down there and secure. So I really don't like that he was that greedy because now he's lost a few additional probes. To, this is now going to not, not allow him to come back into the game the way he needs to. He's now going to be just be flat out behind and probably lose. I think we're going to see Royal progress here, guys. I think we're going to see that final game Royal versus Bisu. I'm kind of hype about it, but I would have liked yeah. to see, you know, Mini uh, close out this series with an all kill. I'm sure he's uh, pretty sad he's not going to get that extra thousand dollars in his pocket. Uh, it's like one thousand. Um, I don't even know. Five hundred dollars, something like that. One thousand two hundred dollars. I'm not, not exactly sure uh, how it's translating these days, but that's a big loss, man. And throwing that, uh, you know, <laughs> Giving all that up because he went for a gateway, uh, a, a proxy gateway, man. Uh, he's got to have deja vu from one of his last uh, ASL performances. But he fumbled with his probe micro initially. Mm. Like his probes were not even all attacking the SCVs initially. Once he yeah. arrived with the additional probes, he was very slow in getting on top of the SCVs and starting to gun them down with the, the particle beam. So maybe if he'd been a tiny bit quicker with his, how he was controlling his probes on the initial engagement, maybe it would have slowed down the DPS on the gateway enough for the Zelda to squeeze out and unfortunately didn't transpire. Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> rough game here for Mini from this spot. He's going to get into a, yeah. a Reaver, and some magic can happen with a Reaver, but Terran players are good enough at this point to handle a lot of this stuff. And oh, oh, wait a second. Oh my god, the tank getting away with 3 HP. The tank. The he get tank. He's going to just sack oh. in there. He does get the tank. That is fine. Mini uh, sacrificing the Zealot. Just to get that one last tank kill. Look at how many units are That's available crazy. for Royal you in comparison to what Mini right has. <laughs> Absolutely insane. You need, yeah, you yeah. need some miracle reaver shots here to have any hope at uh, holding on. And I mean, he's going to come up this ramp and eat a mine. Oh my God. He actually got both hits. 50% miss chance for the one Dragoon on the left there. And he might have ended up losing that, but he keeps it alive. He's going to counterattack with the Dragoons there at the natural. Try to cut off reinforcements. This Reaver is so badly needed. The two uh, shield batteries here are going to be critical. He's going to try and keep these Dragoons alive, but eventually those will break through. Uh, they're kind of just fodder here right now, buying that time for the Reaver to finally pop out. We don't have an Observer here, so we can't clear these mines. How is he ever going to break out? He's going to lose his Dragoon at the front there. Unfortunately, not healing that up with the shield battery. Might as well make use of that right now. He's going to drop the Reaver, start to take some shots. He can eat a few hits from the tanks because he can heal up with the with the uh, shield battery, but not for long. Bunker in the front. Mines here. This is almost impossible now for, for Mini to break through. Yeah, with the bunker set up and him not being able to snipe the bunker, it's almost impossible for him to break out here. He could drill out all his probes and the Dragoons and unload the Reaver onto the tanks and it still wouldn't be enough. It's, unfortunately, he's going to have to abandon this natural expansion and eventually abandon the game altogether. Uh, he's going to come around here the side, maybe drop the Zealot. Can he get a huge mine connection? Uh, no, looks like the mine not going to actually connect on those tanks. He's going to get one tank for his efforts. Picking off that, but the target firing here from Royal, a little bit too good. The tank's always firing on that Reaver and dealing that damage, and now the Reaver's very low. It's not going to be able to get uh, the shots that it needed. If he had dropped the Zealot on top of the tank, maybe he could have dragged that mine, and then he'll follow it up with a, with a, a shot from the Reaver, but he was uh, more concerned about... Uh, dropping up the Zealot at first to eat the uh, tank shots. Now he's going to go after this tank. He does get one more tank. Maybe he can get one more shot on that Reaver, but he can't get another one. He'll have to drop on top in order to get the shot. Oh, he does get one more shot, but it's not going to kill it. 2 HP on that. Does drag the mines into it. He will be able to clear this just barely. But the Vulture's going to get a few more kills here. Nice job with the Reaver. Okay, I mean, that was about the best 
clear that you could ever hope for. That was like a, what would you call it? Like an impossible map or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Right, I know exactly what you mean. And yeah, those are the kind of things that he needs to have any kind of hope at winning this game. He's so far behind, even after breaking out. It's still a nightmare situation for him, but he's going to try and make a game of it. He doesn't want to just tap out yet. He still has some counterplay options, and there's a chance that a Terran player makes, you know, some big blunders when moving out. He has got this five gateway production already churning, though, so there will be a sizable push coming from Royal soon, unless he just wants to sit back and chill on three bases. There's a lot of choices for Royal going forward. He doesn't even have to attack going forward. He could just sit and turtle, get his upgrades, chill on three bases, make a depot wall and just relax. Or he could go for the big, big push and just try and end the game right now while Mini's trying to stabilize and take a third base. Yeah, I think that's what he should do is just chill, relax, and keep scanning. See when the bases are coming up. If they're too greedy, go for that push. Take him out. If they're, you know, slow enough that a Mini is being a little bit more safe, then you can just chill. Um, get into your upgrades and eventually take this game. Uh, as long as he's got full information, he should be able to make the right choice here. Royal, just slowly pushing out some vultures, you know, trying to go around the map, maybe pick off this shuttle. He's going to dive right on top of this. He's going to gun down one of these Reavers. One of them is very low. The second Reaver here with 10 kills actually going to be able to hold its ground. And he did a good job, like, running the shuttle away and just targeting the Reavers there rather than, you know, trying to come in and pick up and run away. Uh, he would have been losing that shuttle for sure. Uh, however, still trading out a few units here. Any trade is pretty much a good trade at this point for Royal. He, he throws away a few Goliaths for a Reaver. Um, Mini, like, his, uh, his entire hope is based on this Reaver right now. He has to get right. this huge damage with that. So picking that off is great for Royal. Yeah, much like in chess, when you're ahead, you can trade pieces off the board to simplify the game state, and that's kind of what we're seeing here. Every time units are dying for Mini, it does kind of simplify the game state for Royal even more and provide even less hope for Mini having the kind of pieces on the board needed to kind of get some kind of advantage. But this Reaver drop in the natural expansion has the potential to find big damage. Look at these big, dudded scarab shots, though, not really finding any connection to any damage at all. Got to be circling around back into the main base to see if he can find some kind of damage in there instead. And look Look at this, just more and more duds from these scarabs not going his way. Finally does get a double vulture hit on those, but not the kind of economic damage that he needs. No, not the kind of economic damage he needs at all. And there's a uh, turret here in the natural. He does get Ooh. one big shot, 17 kills on that reaver. It does finally go down. Number 18 and 19 do follow, but mm. this is what we were talking about earlier, right? With um, mini versus... Uh, uh, sharp earlier is like yes you killed a bunch of workers but that worker those worker kills are not going to really matter uh for a few minutes at least right they're not really going to kick in uh, and this push is coming right now the army is already built can he actually deal with this army without those reavers that he just lost he does have another one popping out he does do a good job juggling that but it's being targeted here the shuttle by the goliath it loses almost all its hp one shot away from death so he can't really be as uh, aggressive with the shuttle anymore and he needs to be slowing this down as much as possible as it comes across the map yeah, Mini's looking minuscule oh. right now. I don't know, I know how he's going to hold on. It's just like, he's 40 supply behind Royal. If Royal can just, like, leverage his army against Mini in any kind of appropriate way, he's going to win the game. Mini's going to do some kind of, like, weird desperation play of maybe trying to cut off reinforcements and do some kind of counterplay, but it's not going to work, and there's not enough slowdown here to deal with this kind of Terran mech army. If Royal's really slow and makes some kind of crazy errors, or, like, say, a jet engine falls on top of his computer or something, maybe mini can win but as it stands i really do feel like this is like a guaranteed win for royal hit ah, he's even gonna lose that reaver he was waiting for a shuttle to pop out the second reaver is in the main base ready to be picked up and brought to the front line but there's just way too much mech here from royal royal systematically taking apart mini now uh that he won that early game just solid tear and play from him gonna come in deal with these reavers the reaver shots are amazing Killing off a lot of vultures here, but it's just not going to matter. One reaver is all that's left here. A couple of zealots with no speed popping out to try and uh, you know back them or back up this reaver. That's not going to be enough. Two dragoons. That's not going to be enough. Reaver here in the mineral line. <laughs> Mini just desperately trying to hold on, but everything is blowing up in his natural. He's going to lose his nexus. He's got another nexus in the bottom left, but we're we're talking about a three base Terran here with five factories just 
gunning down everything, oh, killing all the probes. Mini is processing the loss here. 10 kill tank. Uh, almost as good as that Reaver we saw earlier. Yeah, he's going to be kicking himself after not getting that Zara out right at the start of the game. Could be seeing an easy win for him. And instead, we at home are going to be having the luxury of going through and seeing Bisu up against Royal in the final match showdown of the evening. There's just no hope for Mini recovering from here. We're just seeing the last death throws of Mini still kicking, but there's not much life in the, uh, the cadaver here. Uh, he's going to push forward for that final kill. GG. Mini taps out. Royal going to go to our last game. No all kill this week, and that all kill prize will grow. It will continue to grow, but who's going to get the meat? This week, will it be at Bisu and his team, or will it be Royal and the Terran squad? We're going to find out coming up right after this. Ah, it's always a great feeling when we make it to set number eight in the first week of KSCM. Feels like a good season start, doesn't it? Ah, oh, tis the season. Yeah, I'm happy to see it. And uh, a little bit lag in the game, actually. So a little bit of lag. You notice that? Look at that. Korean internet not up to scratch for some reason. Usually these guys are boasting about good the internet. For some reason, we had a little bit of lag there. I'm not sure what was going on. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe um, a little connectivity issue. Um, maybe something wrong with the VOD. I'm not sure, but um, we're we'll be getting into this one. Nobody's complaining. Nobody's pausing. Uh, you know, sometimes on Battle.net, the the early part of the game could be a little shaky as things start to calm down. Though, um, usually you get the correct turn rate. Uh, for maybe your, it is a small indie company after all, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely was when this game came out. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, how times have changed. Bittersweet memories. Ah. Anyway, going to be going straight into this game with BC throwing down his gateway in the natural expansion to provide a little bit of additional pressure from the rush distance being shortened for those zealots ever so slightly. Could be coming into the main base, harassing the building SUVs or maybe cycling back to steal the gas. Yeah, this is basically normal play for... Uh... Protoss on this map um, any two player map really will mm. kind of devolve into this type of uh, Protoss shenanigans and we're going to have Royal here putting down something out in the middle of the map is it going to be a second barracks that he throws down here and just get into some real pressure uh, and kind of a wild game I think that's what we're going to see yeah barracks yeah. gets thrown down he's going to fake out like he's just defending with a single Rax here back at home and he's going to be banking a bunch of marines in the background and eventually going for like a big counter attack where he tries to shut down the early nexus of uh, b2 yeah usually you can make the second barracks in the main base to like deal with like a pro uh, double proxy gate shenanigans but mm -hmm. in this case you can make it out on the map and apply pressure to your opponent as well and b2 won't have calculated the kind of the, the what he needs to to hold off both barracks worth of production of marines so he's going to start pulling marines at this second racks and you know bisu as far as he's concerned everything is just normal and we're going to go into a very normal game here from here but instead that's not going to be what happens he's going to go with a large force of marines soon and put on a lot of pressure on bisu who's going to be wanting to just throw down a nexus right now and it's not going to be optimized to deal with this kind of force no he's not going to be ready for this uh, Royal is still banking, still banking those uh, those Marines, and yeah, like you said, there's no way to know about this. Uh, we're, we've all, all we've got is a barracks, uh, two supply depots, bunch of SCVs, few Marines. He's it lo he looks like he's about to take his natural, right? He's got his SCVs right. in the front. He's starting a bunker out here. This is all completely normal uh, to Bisu's eyes. He has no idea that there's this uh, barracks out here on the map, and he's going to be completely blindsided by it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is a small chance that Bisu went for, like, an earlier second gate for some reason, but with the, the line of play that we usually see in PVT, he's not going to have any inclination of doing that. But he is going to be sending this probe out on the map. It's possible that he does smell the potential here, but he's not going to be checking up here. Critically, not going to be checking this location where the barracks is and the Marines are being pulled. He now does see the SEV and Marines moving out from the natural expansion, which might tip him off that this is a little bit of aggression, but not this kind of aggression where we've got an additional three or four Marines going to be coming from the western flank to bolster this effort. Yeah, if you knew about this as Bisu, you're just going to throw down a forge and you should be able right. to get a cannon and you should be able to win this game. But uh, he's going to get completely blindsided. It seemed like he had some inkling that something might be coming, something might be off, but 
It doesn't look like he's prepared properly for it. There's so many Marines here. The DPS is way too high. The great pull aside to the right-hand side here from these Marines is going to allow him to kill all of the probes and the uh, Zealots are going to fall. And with the gateway here in the natural, I mean, instant target on the pylon. Really, really smart play from Royal. He backs away from the probe drill as well perfectly. Only loses one Marine, kills off all the probes. A Dragoon is going to pop out at the very last second here, but it gets targeted immediately by all these Marines and killed off. There's the pylon going down. There's the GG. Royal going to take this final game and a tearing victory to start the season. Wow. Wow. I didn't expect that. I thought we were going to see a, a, an early Protoss victory, especially with this lineup. I'm really impressed with both uh, Light, Sharp, and Royal here. They've done, they've outdone themselves today, especially Light and Royal. I'm really impressed with these guys. They're actually stellar stuff, and the execution there was almost picture perfect from Royal too. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Light uh, t today. I mean, he could have gone all the way if it wasn't for Troy. Uh, he was playing so fantastically. Unfortunately, Troy kind of shut him down there. Uh, Mini able to pull out kind of the dirtiest strategy we've seen so far. Um, I don't know why all Pro play Protoss players don't do that on that map, especially against Terran, even against Proto or even against Zerg. Excuse me, uh, going for that type of style is it just feels superior to Gate. Try to kill the simulators shut down any ability to expand, make it really hard and difficult for the, the opponent to, to basically do anything. But Royal manages to clutch it out, manages to take home that 750,000 won uh, prize. No all kill here today, but each of these Terran players are going to get the beef. Yeah, and well deserved as well. Great to see Terran with a victory to start out here. Our point rankings there uh, shooting up uh, for week number one but still a long way to go have to maintain that type of uh, dominance will be very tough this season we're sticking with the same maps here from the ASL I think a lot of you know, Protoss favored maps overall this season they're doing very well in the ASL yeah. it's, just, it's just rough yeah, I mean, on this current trajectory, Terran will reach uh, outer orbit approximately between week six and seven. So that'll be interesting. Finally becoming a, a truly spacefaring race then on the point ranking as well as uh, yeah, in, the, in the stars in this beautiful game, StarCraft. Would love to see Light performing the way he performed today for the remainder of the season as well. I want to see more longevity from him and more consistency. We haven't really been seeing Light turn up with his A game these last couple of seasons. It would be lovely to see him back on form and showing these pros players what's what. And not uh, quite in time for the ASL, but it's nice to see him performing well. And it's never too late to turn your game around to start performing well in StarCraft. This game is not going anywhere anytime soon, especially with sponsors still coming out to support the beautiful game. And having people like yourselves, your, the viewers like you, sponsoring mm -hmm. and supporting us as well. We really appreciate it. Uh, this is this is the only way that we're going to be able to keep going here, guys. Uh, we're not going to be getting H Small sponsoring us anytime soon, so it's really up to <laughs> really up to the viewers to keep this thing going. It's a shame as well because I really could do this on B for about now. I'm kind of envious of these Terran players uh, getting their stakes, and uh, it seems to be the best race to get the stakes. I'm not too sure if the the Protoss or the Zerg would necessarily be able to like enjoy that like, beautiful cow meat necessarily in the same way uh, you know a born and bred Terran would so definitely going to be the the best race to claim that prize this week going forward i think yeah the the meat is sweet but victory is sweeter Terran taking it home this week and taking home that prize money as well we're going to be looking forward to their continued good performance in the coming weeks especially light but uh, a little bit shocked to see Soul Key go down right away this this week. I mean, yeah, the the current ASL champion um, getting taken down by Mini of all people. Mini really showing up this week as well. Yeah, Mini really did make uh, Soul Key look a little bit silly there, stealing his soul in that game. So now Key is going to have to use that key to unlock his soul again and come back into full strength at some point in the season. I hope he's not going to be too tormented by that loss, but it did seem to rattle him a little bit, especially with his GG timing. So we'd like to see him recover from that healthily. 
going forward and uh, saying just like to quickly say to the guys here really love having your guys' support uh, i'm not necessarily in charge of saiyan's channel in it by any stretch of the word however i do really appreciate any support you show saiyan and uh, it, um, it's always a pleasure to be here for you guys to cast and bring you some entertainment and some interesting games and hopefully with your guys' support we can continue continue to do this for many years to come yeah absolutely and talking about rattling things up i mean mini taking down sharp right overcoming that uh five loss streak versus sharp pretty massive he's kind of shaken up that zeitgeist he's going to be going into uh, his future games against him with a bit more confidence that's a really nice uh, story to see and uh yeah that's that's what we're all about here guys is putting the context in behind these games, you know, seeing mm. the, the stories unfold uh, between these players outside of things like the ASL and, and other big tournaments. Yeah, it would be so fascinating if somehow we had like uh, an interpreter and we could like get these guys in for like an interview and like actually ask these guys some questions. It's a shame we can't do a deep dive on these guys and like get to know the man behind the legend, so to speak, and understand these guys more intrinsically. However, we will do our best to, you know, provide a narrative and introspection on what's going on in both our own minds and the minds of these players as we go forward in these games and try and clue you in on uh, the narrative of this beautiful game, StarCraft. Yeah, and if we if we don't know exactly what's going on, we could always just make some shit up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just, just make up our own narrative. We'll just uh, yeah. <laughs> talk about, you know, how this player is not happy with that player, or that player fears this player. Why not? It, it'll, it's it's all in good fun. Hey, I heard shuttle called like chubby. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past shuttle, man. That guy likes to talk shit for sure. Just watch him in, uh, you know, group selections or something like that. The dude is. A chatterbox, quite a funny guy. <laughs> um, yeah, fun, fun, very fun to watch. Very, very interesting to uh, have mm. some people with personality in the ASI. I feel That's like, funny. I feel like StarCraft Brood War has some of the best personalities in terms of pro oh, gotcha. gamers out of any yeah. uh, sport right now. Like, I think it. Do you know what? I think it's to do with just how crazy hard the game is. It fosters a sense of elitism. But if you can rise above the mental struggle of the game and come out like clean on the other side, you kind of have this like sense of bravado, I guess, which allows this like charisma to really shine. And I think yeah, some of these guys may be a little bit egotistical and what have you, but sometimes for good reason. These guys are really good at what they do, and there's not many people that can do it. And you could even make the argument that like some of the things they're doing are maybe relatively harder than most fields out there in terms of like how zero sum game this is and how high up they are on that echelon within that zero sum game. And the rise of streaming as well, I think, has brought out a lot of these personalities. They, that's how they're making their money. That's the, the bread and butter of StarCraft professional play these days is in the streaming personalities. You need to be a funny person. You need to be you know, interesting on the stream to get people to watch. And, mm -hmm. and that comes out as well. That, that develops those characters more and more so that when we you know, see them in these tournaments, we get to see some really funny, uh, interesting back and forths. It's, it's great to see. I, I mean, I, it, it is really funny and frustrating if you go back and watch some of the older StarCraft, like way back in the day, how timid the, the players were. They hated <laughs> being on camera. They hate to talk right, on the microphone. Right. And compare that to today, these guys are so much more uh, mature and uh, you know willing to talk on camera, willing to talk on the microphone. Like, these guys are uh, very willing to go back and forth and, and make a good show out of things, so it's great to see. Yeah, we went from like timid nerds being awkwardly dressed up in like weird like cyberpunk armor costumes <laughs> in like weird like studio sets to like Fireback Hero like dancing off the stage in his swimming trunks with his like sunglasses on and like going into the the sea after celebrating a win on stage. You know what I mean? Like yeah. completely different dynamic shift. Yeah, and and now everybody's wearing like their almost like biker jackets, uh, ASL uh, symbols <laughs> on them, and uh, yeah, talking on the microphone like they're getting ready for a fight in the UFC, you know what I mean? Like they're they're talking crap, they're, uh, you know, firing back and forth at each other. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome to have uh, this yeah. C-Sport in 2024. But, uh, I mean, and he's... He's possibly in a little bit of t trouble as well. And I would argue that StarCraft not only might be the grandfather of esports, but also might be 
the guardian angel and the phoenix rising from the ashes and like keeping esports alive and thriving as well yeah it is definitely in trouble man there's there's been so much like scandal and weirdness in esports recently with uh, companies just trying to buy their way into an esport and just make mm. a an e a game that is suitable for esports that uh, they've kind of lost the script in a lot of ways and they've lost a lot of people's attention uh, which is the main currency of course of you know streaming and, right. and making these big tur tournaments uh it, it's it's rough to see but I'm I'm really glad that we have uh, this back this game as the the backbone of esports that uh, is allowing this beautiful and interesting kind of f cultural phenomenon to continue i mean i i would love to see this game continue for many years to come and i can see it being the type of retro game that we're still playing in 10 20 30 odd years uh, even though technology will advance rapidly i do think there'll be this like niche for these like old school games that just won't be seen again without the help of ai maybe helping some develop, uh, independent developer like create his own kind of like niche game that's similar to this i really don't see another game being made that's anything like this and this might be what we've got for many years to come in terms of some kind of retro rts that we can still hold dear to our hearts i've got some more stuff to say about that but i'll save it for the podcast that's right guys we've got Ooh. a podcast it's called the doom drop should check it out doom sometime drop. where we just talk uh, crap about whatever we're thinking about if it's starcraft or uh, consciousness or we're talking about religion all kinds of different topics are discussed on that podcast so uh, if you're interested in listening to our sultry voices uh, a little bit more than just in the kcm you might want to check that out uh, it's a lot of fun yeah. we're just kind of starting it out i think we've done what three episodes so far yeah, we've done three episodes so far, and we are dual uploading it, so you can enjoy it on either channel you want. We don't mind. You can just watch it on Saiyan's channel for convenience if you need to. That's totally cool. I'm not going to mind about that. We just want you guys to enjoy the conversations we have. And we did just want an excuse to come together each week to talk, really, isn't it? So <laughs> yeah, just have just just to have some fun and uh, you know, discuss some things that we're thinking about. Um, yeah, it's a good time. I hope you guys will check it out. Uh, if not, all good. We're having a great time on the KCM mm -hmm. here, and we're looking forward to next week. Uh, we'll try to upload it a little bit sooner next week. We had some trouble downloading the KCM this week, so right. it had to be a little bit later. So apologies for that, guys. We'll try to get it out a tiny bit sooner, maybe one day earlier uh, than this week. Depends, of course, on KCM and the software uh, able to, to download that. So uh, thanks for hanging in. Thanks for waiting for this upload. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.